seasons come and go, yet the pageantry and tradition of college football remain timeless. And as another season kicks off, the story of this year will be reflected in the faces of the players and coaches who will compete simply for the glory of victory. Through their eyes, we understand that this is a game of great emotion, frustration, exultation, celebration. This year's class may be shaped by the face of a quarterback from Miami, or perhaps a linebacker from Oklahoma, or maybe a tailback from Michigan State. For sure, there will be others, each with a story, each with a hope, each with the burning desire to be the best. These are the faces of college football. And today, CBS Sports starts down the road of yet another season. CBS Sports opens the season in the Great Northwest as Ohio State meets Washington. Ohio State is led by Captain Jim Carsados, whose favorite target is the acrobatic All-American Chris Carter. Across the line, another Chris, Chris Chandler, will be looking for his number one receiver, Lonzel Hill, to break open this game. It's a Big Ten, Pac-10 confrontation, and maybe a look ahead at the Rose Bowl as the Ohio State Buckeyes meet the Washington Huskies. Husky Stadium in Seattle. It's Ohio State versus Washington. Today's game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer and the all-new Toyota Supra. Performance without compromise. Who could ask for anything more? Stroh's and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. Cigna, whose companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services around the world. And by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Welcome, everybody, to Seattle, and a good afternoon. I'm Brent Musburger. Good to have you back for another college football season. Our team will be with you every Saturday now throughout the fall. Joining me here in the broadcast booth will be our analyst, the former head coach of Notre Dame, Era Parsegan. And down on the field, providing those special insights, will be Pat O'Brien. The fourth member of our team, well, he holds fourth back in New York, and he's got a mighty important job because he'll keep us up to date on all the scores and the late-breaking developments around the country. And we say a very good day to Jim Nance. Jim, nice to have you back with us. All right, thank you, Brent. Indeed, it's good to be back. This year, I'll be flying solo as my old partner, Pat Hayden, has returned to the booth. He'll team with Vern Lundquist on both NFL and college games this fall. You know, already college football has had its share of heroes and controversies this season, and we'll be here to cover all the emerging trends and the latest news. Unfortunately, we have some tragic news to report today. Pablo Lopez, a starting offensive tackle for Florida State, was shot and killed early this morning on campus in Tallahassee. According to police, shortly after 1 a.m., Lopez was involved in a parking lot argument with a non-student who then took a shotgun from his vehicle and fired it into Lopez's stomach. Pablo Lopez was 21. Now a couple of score updates. Virginia Tech and Clemson, an upset of the making. Virginia Tech leading now by three in the third quarter. And 11th ranked BYU tied with New Mexico 7-7 in the first quarter. And I'll be back at halftime with all the scores and highlights. And my guest will be Oklahoma linebacker Brian Bosworth, who stands out in more ways than one. Right now, it's Ohio State of Washington. Let's go back out now to Brent Musburger. All right, Jim, and we've got another excellent linebacker. You mentioned Bosworth. How about Chris Spielman, number 36? We'll meet him. We'll continue right after this message and a word from your local stations. They have traveled from Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Some 3,000 fans are here in support of Coach Earl Bruce and the Buckeyes. And that cheer greets the arrival of Bruce's opponent this afternoon at the other entrance. Here come the Huskies. Well, Coach Marsigan for the Buckeyes. This is their second game. They've had two and a half weeks to iron out any problems. But on the other hand, Washington, Washington coaches and players have had an opportunity 
to look at the Buckeyes, and that's a big advantage. Now, you be the coach. Which position would you prefer to be in? Oh, I'd rather be in Washington's position. A chance to set my game plan on what I know they're going to do, camouflage anything new. Oh, it's very <laughs> devious. Listen, Eric, pick out one man in this game who we should focus on. Who's the most important player today? I think today it's the Washington quarterback, Chris Chandler, number 17. The coaches are really high on him. I mean, he's got great leadership ability, can throw the ball, can run it, but he's only had three games of experience, and he's the key for us to watch today. So it'll be Chris Chandler quarterbacking the Washington Huskies of Don James. Meanwhile, on the other side, Jim Carsados, and I'm very impressed with him. He's had a great career, obviously, at the Buckeyes. He had a great game against Alabama, almost pulled it out at the end. He can throw the football, and he's a great one. And two fine wide receivers, as good as you'd want to find. For Coach James, it'll be Lonzel Hill. And for the Buckeyes, number two, Chris Carter. So the captains are at midfield for the coin flip. And we'll be back. The Big Ten takes on the Pac-10. Ohio State against Washington in just a moment. Well, party time here on the West Coast started early this morning, didn't it, Pat O'Brien? Brent, as a matter of fact, I am the, exactly the last person to leave what was billed as the largest tailgate party in the history of college football. They make it some argument. Let me tell you about a different kind of tailgate party that I attended earlier today. All right, it is one hour before kickoff here, and this is Lake Washington. This is the way they tailgate at the University of Washington. All the boats are docked right up next to the stadium here, and it's a little kind of different kind of tailgating. And Phil, you're the skipper here. And what time do you guys arrive here? We got here a little bit after eight o'clock this morning. We got the, one of the first boats. How long have you been doing this? Uh, 15 or 20 years. All right, Pat, now what time are you going out to the game? About 10 minutes before the Huskies start taking them apart on the field. Now, is this a better way to tailgate than in the parking lot? Oh, you bet it is, yeah. There's a lot more room for this. All right, who's going to win today, huh? <laughs> the Houston Huskies. Are. And they say it's the only school where they arrive by boat, and I'll guarantee it's the only tailgating party where they have Dramamine. Let's go inside and watch some football. <laughs> I would use the word Watergate, but I'm fearful about the implication of that, Patrick. So we are ready to go, and there is Jeff Jager, one of the more talented toes in college football this year. He can wind up as the all-time scoring leader if he can score 104 points. And he takes it down, and the Buckeyes will have the first possession with Vince Workman, number 42, returning the kickoff, and he busts it out near the 30-yard line. The Buckeye offense, Jim Carasados, and there are you and I have already talked about this talent from Fullerton, California. How about the men behind him? Big Coop, they call him. He can really bust through there. You can see he's 246 pounds. Vince Workman, who just returned the kickoff for the Buckeyes. Nate Harris is the flanker, number 26, the main man. And a great receiver in Chris Carter. He can do it all. They will come with Workman on first down. They run behind the right side of the offensive line. And Reggie Rogers, number 51. Remember that number and that man all day long because he figures to be an enormous factor in this football game. How about the Buckeye offensive line, Eric? Through the years, they've been one of the more talented units in the game. But they're a little young and green this year. At left tackle, Stasniak. Ewan Hick played last year. Very good player. This is a great one. Bob Maggs, truly an All-American candidate. Second and five for the Buckeyes. And again, they will bring Workman. This time they try left outside. And Tom Erlinson, number 46. Era, that's worth a second look. This is basic football for Ohio State, the tailback pitch sweep. And you see right there, number 46 step in there. Great play by Erlinson. Era, they've got a third and three. Bruce figured to put it up right away. Well, the split backs here, they are more prone to run the draw or throw it. Yep. They will run Workman on that slant out near the 40, which would be a first down. Number 38, David Rill, who figures to make any number of tackles here this afternoon. He was the leading tackler last year, so if they get through that defensive line, it'll be up to Rill to lead the way. The Buckeyes with the first down. I think one of the things that uh, Earl Bruce did there with the split backs, their history from the game against Alabama was to pass and run the draw. They broke that trend right there. They are, here they are attacking on first. 
first down from the arm. And using Workman again up behind Mag, as you mentioned him, he blew a hole open there in the middle of that defense. Well, I've been impressed with Mags for the last two years. Here's a good shot looking directly in. Let's watch Mags right over the center. They double team Alford right there. He overruns it, and you can see a little crack open up. And Peoples, number 26, a great, strong free safety, does a nice job. Then they pull Mags off the double team, and he stood up real to keep him out of the hole. So Mags double block on that, and it is second and five out of the eye for the Buckeyes. Looks like an audible here. Our saddles checking off. The workman has been the workhorse behind the right side, and he cannot find an opening as Steve Roberts 94 who figured to be tested early did the job and let's meet the defensive players now for Don James and the Washington Huskies. How about this group up front era? Brian Habby but left tackle and Steve Albert a very fine nose man. Reggie Rogers on truly an all-American candidate really great speed. Steve Roberts was moved from tackle to the outside backer. Now this is third and three Bo Yates is the whip linebacker as he's referred to in the Washington terminology. They pull it away from Cooper, get outside, and they stop Workman from the first down. And it was David Rill, number 38, with a superb defensive play. Great job of defensing the option, Brent. We can see it from ground level here. He makes a good break in here to Cooper. Now watch Rill, number 38, come right off from his linebacker spot, do a beautiful job, getting great support from Malone, number four, the right cornerback. So Tom Tupa, one of the more talented punters in college football, will punt it for the Buckeyes. He is also the backup quarterback for Coach Bruce. Off the side of his foot, but it got an Ohio State bounce. And it'll go out inside the 15-yard line. A very fortunate bounce on this artificial turf for Tupa and the Buckeyes. When you come back, Washington will have its first possession of the game. Now we'll see what Coach Don James and the Husky staff has in mind for their first series era. Let's watch the center, number 60, Bern Brustek. He's new, moved over there. They had a few exchange problems earlier in the week. Let's see what happens. The workhorse is the fullback directly behind Chamber, Finney. And they use him up the middle on first down. Let's take a look at the members of this offense right now. Chris Chandler from Everett, Washington, superb athlete, played baseball and basketball. Rick Finney, slowed by injuries last year, but he's healthy now. Vince Weathersby caught 43 passes last year, good receiver and runner. Daryl Franklin with speed on the outside to complement the big weapon, Lonzel Hill. Rod Jones, remember that man, 84. We kept hearing rave reviews in Columbus as well as Seattle about his talents. And this is Weathersby. Daylight swings to the outside with a first down. Great hole, forcing the safety, David Brown, to make the tackle. Well, they call Weathersby a north and south runner, which implies that he doesn't cut to the sideline. You can see here he makes you pay the price. Little delay. Look at the hole that's blocked in there. Beautiful blocking on the left side of the line. Brastic does a good job, number 60. And Weathersby comes right up that field. Takes a great shot there. A great tackle. Era Eisenman, who was the linebacker on that spot, got caught up. He stepped up into the block, and that opened the hole to the outside, and Weathersby took advantage of it. It'll be a first down. Chandler with his first pass of the game to Hill. Well, and he was wide open. The coverage was not, someone missed an assignment, I believe. There was absolutely no support for the cornerback. Let me check that, Aaron. That was Franklin, number seven on the receiving end, and not Hill. Watch how wide open he is here. No one between Chandler and Franklin right there. It appears to be a, an error in the defensive secondary. That leaves him with, him with a second and two. That ball is at the 35 coming out. Finney barrels ahead for the first down. And this young offensive line is blowing holes in that Buckeye defensive line. And here are these men who are doing the job.
job right now, Era. This is one of the biggest college offensive lines that I've ever seen. Take a look at the sizes. We see at 274, Prospect 272, he's the center, has been moved from another guard. Sam Dofsky, watch this guy, 296. Look at Gogan, a real pro prospect, 300 pounds. The Buckeyes with their hands full up front. First down, the ball is at the 43. Chandler keeping it. He crossed the 45-yard line, and Chris Spielman, who despite the fact that his team lost in the kickoff classic, was voted the most valuable player. Let's take a look at the members of this Buckeye defensive unit. Fred Ritter, one of the men up front. Look at their weights, how much smaller they are. They're giving away like 30 pounds a man against that huge offensive line. Spielman at 232, he's an All-American. John Sullivan, he has a twin brother in that lineup today, too. Second down and seven for Chandler. Swings it. Withersby across midfield. Another Washington first down as he gets inside of the 45-yard line. Here I had the feeling in talking to the Husky coaching staff yesterday that they were extremely confident about this team. They really were. Uh, here you see Chandler just drop back. It's a little quick screen. Actually, there's a missed tackle right here by number 37, who is William White. Then good blocking by the line. It's filtered out to the left side. And Weathersby gets 10 yards on the play. That was Mike Sullivan, number 67, who came all the way back from the nose to help out that time. Good ball possession drive by James. Here he is using Finney on a buck up into the Spielman territory. Now, Errol, let's take a look at the men who are in the secondary of Ohio State. William White is in one corner. He's back from a year ago. Greg Rogan at the right corner, number 29, got great speed. And Sonny Gordon is really the leader on this defensive secondary. Very bright youngster. And the freshman, David Brown. He replaced Terry White, who was kicked off the team and subsequently has enrolled at West Virginia, we understand. Second and six. For the Huskies, who have moved the ball, took it inside the 15, and here's Finney for still another first down, and they're forcing Derek Eisenman to make the stop. They're looking at that outside linebacking spot. They are directing their attack to the left. By using multiple formations, they're causing Ohio State to defend the width of the field, and you could see that Chandler called an audible to Fenny that time because there was a big opening in up front. They blocked it well, and he made positive yardage. Errol, what can the Buckeyes do here to change up? Can they come with a blitz? I think they're a little off balance by some of these new formations that they're looking at. Weathersby was losing his balance, but he gained a couple of yards. Camaro, 14 out of the Chicago area, again in on the stop. We have any number of NFL prospects on the field, and tomorrow we've got a dandy doubleheader for you. Buddy Ryan goes back into Chicago, and Mike Ditka is ready for that. And then the doubleheader game, it's the 49ers and the Rams. Both teams should contest for the NFC West title on CBS. We'll start at 12.30 Eastern time. Second down and eight. Still another formation. Chandler throwing toward Franklin. Knocked away. Sonny Gordon was over there with William White on the coverage. They had Franklin doubled up. Excellent job. Excellent job of defensive coverage. Actually, Chandler should not have thrown that ball. He's doubled on this play. Looks left. Then he drops, rolls out to the right, lofts the ball, but you can see White, number 37, and, and, not, and number 7, Sonny Gordon, both of them right there. Actually could have intercepted the ball. Well, I guess the ball was thrown pretty well. They, good defense, though. It's third and eight. This is the 11th play. Ball is turned loose by the quarterback, and the Buckeyes have got the turnover. That was Ritter who barreled in. We'll take another look at that. I think the ball may have slipped out of his hand as he dropped back, but let's hold up until we see the replay on that. The Buckeyes swarmed in on the loose ball. Let's take a look here, Era. Let's see if Weathersby, number 22, hits Chandler's arm. He delays here. Now he drives in. Chandler is not looking for Weathersby. He knocked the ball out of his hands. A mistake and a big one. Let's take still another look at this from the side. 
Here is Chandler back. Weathersby is there. The ball is loose, and Ritter reacts ever so quickly for Earl Bruce. Now Carsados. Workman has carried the ball on every offensive play for the Buckeyes so far. And there, number 51, Reggie Rogers, his brother, of course, died tragically earlier this summer from a parent drug overdose. And Reggie is dedicating the season in his memory. He was a basketball player that I covered with these Huskies once in a game against Duke out in North Carolina. And he played football on the basketball floor, let me tell you. Great basketball player. He showed remarkable quickness on that play. Now he's going to the left side, you see. Second and nine. Carsado slipped as the rain starts to come down here in Seattle. And it is pounding down all of a sudden. That late movement by the Washington defense, I think, confused the blocking of Ohio State that time. Checking that scoreboard, New Mexico and Brigham Young. Brigham Young is next for these Huskies. They are 7-all. Army leading Syracuse 9-7. Syracuse with a disappointing way to start the season last week. Mississippi State did it to them, and Tennessee up by two. Maybe Mississippi State's pretty talented this year. Third and nine. Was Workman carries to the 45-yard line. Tom Erlinson, 46, stepped in there. Good call by Carsadas. Actually, they come from the sideline from Earl Bruce. But Washington was deployed, anticipating a pass, and they're going to put the rush on the passer. You'll see the hole open up beautifully over the right side. There's Cotterman, 72, blocking out, and a big hole is developed there. Good call on the part of Buckeyes. Tim Tupa hunting for the second time, and because of the rain, Coach James has switched his deep man. He is going to the very sure hands of Tim Peoples, number 26. He knows how difficult it is to feel the punt in this weather. And this one, Peoples won't even attempt. What a great punt by Tupa. He nailed it out of bounds at the six-yard line. It'll be Washington's second possession. We've got no score. Ohio State and the Huskies, and we'll be right back. Time remaining first quarter. The star for the Buckeyes, their punter, Tom Tupa. He has forced Washington to start from the 14, and now they will be coming out from the six-yard line. Oh, if I was an NFL scout, would I write down the name Tom Tupa? Because not only as a punter, he can someday be your third string quarterback. He backs up Carsados here with the Buckeyes. Now it is up to Chandler to see if he can rally the Huskies again. He had him on the move before that fumble a moment ago. Straight ahead power football with Finney. It went 62 days without raining, I believe. And Pat O'Brien, I think we're breaking that streak along about now. Brent, I think you're right. You know, this is the only stadium in the country that actually has a moat. And that's where <laughs> I am. They used to use this for drainage when they had grass. Now they got the turf. I'm going to hang out here till I get an umbrella. Talk to you later, Brad. <laughs> they could actually invite a World Cup soccer match. In He's just there to keep dry. <laughs> <laughs> Second and seven for the Huskies. Weathersby and Finney are the setbacks behind Chandler. And here he comes again. Finney. Spielman steps in as the mascot of the Huskies looks on here and says, come on, men, let's keep it going downfield. Question mark, Byrne Brostek coming in, the center for Washington. I've watched him the last two or three times doing an excellent job of blocking on Sullivan. It's third and one. As the center brings the team to the line of scrimmage. And in the rain, perhaps they could have difficulty on a snap, but not this time. Power football for another first down. Well, go to that full house backfield down around the goal line. We'll see more of that when, if they get near the goal line, I should say. They'll use a lot of that full house football. Here you see it from the end zone. They load up with big running backs and fullbacks, and they'll run the option off of that with Chandler. And with that big offensive line, maybe they'll show us the fridge before the season's <laughs> over. Coach James, who did such a good job here in the last decade of bringing Washington back to the top of the football mountain. Last year was a disappointment. A lot of injuries. They did defeat Colorado in the Freedom Bowl. Delay with Finney out past the 20-yard line. And the play calling seems to have 
the Buckeyes back on their heels so far. Well, as, as we talked at the top of the show, talking about camouflaging what you plan to do, Washington is using more multiple formations in this game, and if you haven't been able to see them, there's adjustments that have to be made. And I think Ohio State in this first quarter has had trouble adjusting. Let's see how they do as the game progresses. Second and six. Possible passing situation, but they're having good success on the ground with the rain coming down. And he went to Weathersby on a draw off the I formation. Got out to the 26-yard line with Fred Ritter, who recovered that fumble, number 90, bringing him down. Fred's a versatile football player. They'll use him over the nose, and they'll use him over at the left tackle spot. Era, have you noticed any special blocking tactics against Spielman to try and keep him away? Not really. The deployment of the offensive line by splitting out, and, and they also have stretched the Ohio State defense by big formation. Here they are in the full house again. Second this time back. they fake to Finney. They come straight ahead with Covington for the first down. They worked on that on Thursday. The second back through. Making the Finney, everybody gathered for Finney, and you can see that he made the first down. Watch here. Makes a good fake, and there's a big hole right there that he picks through, does a nice job on it. Now, Tony Covington, the backup fullback. I want you to watch Finney, who has been the ball carrier. They fake it to him. He carries out the fake very well up into the middle and helped open up that hole. Ball at the 35. Washington has dominated the possession. But Ohio State is even up on that scoreboard. They swing Finney. Chandler looking the other way, puts it away, and runs up near the 45. There was a loose ball. Ohio State signaling that they recovered. Called it down. They call it down, Aaron? Yeah, I think so. They call it down. Washington ball. He was down. Let's watch from behind Chandler. He pulled out. Finney had swung to the left. He looked quickly, didn't like what he saw, and then he kept it. Now, remember, there's a rule change this year in college football. But the ground can cause the fumble. But that time, the whistle had blown, and the ball was down, and we have no instant replay in college football like they are using in the NFL. And on second down, Weathersby broke a tackle and battled for the first down with Spielman hanging on. Well, I can't believe it. There's just 22 seconds left to go in this quarter. It's been a very, very fast drum play quarter. Certainly, if you are a Washington Husky fan, you have to be optimistic. If you are an Ohio State fan, you're encouraged by the fact that it is still scoreless. The Huskies have not gotten into the end zone. They'll throw on first down. Oh, over through his tight end, Rod Jones. Oh, he had him wide open. He wants that one back. You'll watch Jones will split the two deep secondary. Jones, 84 releases. Now watch this. He's got him wide open. Overthrows him by a considerable amount. Look at this. But he is wide open in that scene. Perhaps the rain affected the grip or the throw that time. He threw very well on Thursday when we watched him. The eyes of an All-American linebacker, Chris Spielman, looking in with the rain coming down here in Seattle. Second and ten. They'll run out the quarter with the fullback, Finney, across midfield. Number 95, Daryl Lee, making the tackle for the Buckeyes. The end of our first quarter. Ohio State and Washington are scoreless. We'll return after this message and a word from your local stations. Lake Washington here being bathed in rain. Many of the fans arrive in boats to see their beloved Huskies. And it's Washington nothing, Ohio State nothing as we start the second quarter. And the Huskies switch into the I formation. This is a third and five inside the 50-yard line. Chandler to put it up. Incomplete, and there was interference as Jones worked his way across. 
Drake Rogan smacked into him early. No doubt about that one, Era. Made contact before the ball got there, and I'm not so sure that he would have been able to catch it. Should have gone for the football. Let's take a look from here from ground level. There's the throw right there by Chandler. There's the contact. Well, actually, he was sitting there ready to intercept the football, and a defender ran into him. Checking that scoreboard, Alabama and Southern Mississippi tied in the second quarter. Alabama beat this Ohio State team. And coming up, the Prudential College Football Report at halftime. Jim Nance will be along with highlights and scores. And a fellow by the name of Bosworth down at Oklahoma. Those Sooners looked pretty good last week. Well, they were awesome. 470 yards on the ground. The fullback, Finney, has rushed for 44 yards with nine carries. There was a bit of a bobble there as Covington. Mike Sullivan. 67 made the tackle. Navy leading Virginia, so both Army and Navy break quickly this afternoon in their games. Miami and Cincinnati tied. That's Era's favorite Miami, I might add. Yep. Oh, no, that just got me in trouble with the Hurricanes. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it at all. Just because you went there is what I was referring to. Second and five. Chandler with good time. On the far side was William White, who stepped in the way of that pass, but he was out of bounds, and there is a penalty marker down. Receivers were well covered on this particular pass attempt. You see William White stepping in there. Ball went right through his hands. He might have had an interception and hung on. Daryl Franklin, the intended receiver, he's caught the only completion in this game and this penalty being marched off against the Buckeyes. Oh, that's a big one. Let's see what he signals here. Oh, face mask. What about the work being done by the Husky offense here in the first half? They've been very impressive for an opening game, I think, Frank. They were a little concerned about their opening game, a young line, although they're big. But they've been very impressive thus far. They're inside the 25. Finney with his 10th carry. Battles his way to the 20-yard line. Spielman and Michael Key, number 30. Well, let's check in for an update with Jim Nance. Jim? Right out of that BYU quarterback factory, Steve Lindsley is the latest off the assembly line. Here he goes nine yards to Bruce Hansen. Second touchdown toss for Lindsley, and BYU leads by seven. Let's go back out to Brenton Era. All right, Jim, and that'll be the quarterback the Huskies will face next week when they take on Brigham Young. Second and seven here for Washington. The Buckeyes and the Huskies are scoreless. Blitz. And they took Finney down with it. Mike Sullivan was in there, number 67, on the blitz, made the play, had no chance. Good call on the part of the Buckeyes, timed it just right. At ground level, you'll see, watch the two backers go. And 67, right there, Mike Sullivan, the nose man, gets through and makes the play before he even has a chance. Chris Spielman, 36, the blitzing linebacker on the other side. His brother, John Sullivan, one of the linebackers, identical twins. Third and 12 for the Huskies. The ball is at the Ohio State 25. Knocked away, incomplete, and Chris Spielman back with a hand on the ball. What a great defensive job Spielman did that time. That was, that was a tremendous defensive job by Spielman. He had to cover man-to-man -man clear across the field and did so, knocked that ball away. That was an outstanding play by Spielman. No wonder he's an All-American candidate. Not only does he tackle well, he had 16 involvements in the Alabama game, one interception, and was the most valuable player. And Jeff Jagger will attempt a 42-yard field goal. It's good. Mr. Automatic. The 
Huskies score first. They lead it by a field goal. 12-41 to go in the first half. It started raining hard midway through the first quarter, and it has not eased up. Jager will tee the ball up at the 35-yard line, which is where they will be kicking it off in college football this year. Jamie Holland and Vince Workman retreat down near the five-yard line. And Workman indeed has been the workhorse as far as the Buckeyes are concerned here this afternoon. He does not have John Woolridge to spell it. Woolridge out with an injury. Jager gets that one to Workman. Out to the 20-yard line. CBS again is proud to announce our continued association with the Toyota Leadership Award. And now it's time to present this week's award to players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. The winners are Jim Carsados of Ohio State, the senior communications major, and David Rill of Washington, a sophomore business pre-med major. And Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's scholarship fund. Mr. Carsados will attempt to rally the Buckeyes now, and he hands off to Workman, who had a hole on the right side, and he exploded out to the 27 with David Will, along with Tim Peoples, making the stops. Harris, so far, Washington has dominated 26 offensive plays to Ohio State's 10. What would the Buckeyes do here offensively to maintain ball control and climb in this? Well, I think that once they get in the field position, they're going to go to their strong suit, Carsadas to Carter, but I think they want to get in the field position before they start taking those chances. Workman behind the left side, near a first down, with Brian Habib, 91, making the stop for Coach Don James. You see, one of the most important things in college football with the T formation is the exchange. And when that ball gets wet, it's tough to handle. You see a good exchange, a good handoff to Workman by Carsadas, but he's been around a while. Third and very short, and pretty soon they're going to have to think about Cooper. But not this time. They let him block. And Workman gets the first down for the Buckeyes. We saw the Washington team try defensively trying to scramble around, get in position. It appeared that the formation threw them off a little bit. They weren't quite set when that ball was finally snapped. Jamie Holland, number six, brings the play in from the sideline. They have a package where he comes on an end around. Sados again checking off at the line of scrimmage. Uh -oh. And they have an exchange fumble, and Carsados pounces on it. Now you get a wet ball, you get wet hands, and uh, we just pointed out they'd had a good exchange before. Now let's see what happens. He just does not get the ball well. Very fortunate to get it back here, Brent. Era Carsados extremely concerned about the audible that time. He did, and he did not off. execute the play well in taking the snap from Mags. They wasted it down and now they have second down in about 12. Off a play fake. Carsados with time. Goes toward Carter and it's incomplete at the 25. Art Malone number four the defensive back working against Earl Bruce's wide receiver. And you just know you're going to see more of that this afternoon. Carter's tremendous. He almost got up here and got this ball. Watch right here. It was a great throw by Carsadas. A little bump there by Malone. And Carter almost came up with that ball. Nice job defensively and also great attempt offensively. Watch the leaping ability of Carter, whose brother Butch was an NBA player who has gone back to Ohio as a high school basketball coach. Among other teams, he played with the Knicks. They split the backs on third down. And here comes Cooper. That will force another Buckeye punt. Well, a reminder about the NFL today, 
Welcome back, buddy. At 12.30 Eastern time, the Chicago Bears will greet their former defensive coordinator. We'll have a live interview with the quarterback who will not play, Jim McMahon. Terry Bradshaw will be joining us live in New York tomorrow. Bear Cross checking in from Soldier Field in Chicago for that Eagle Bear confrontation. Tom Tupa to punt again. And Andre Riley. Rush is on. Beautiful punt. What Drives a... Riley inside the 10. Era Tupas keeping the Buckeyes in this game. Great kick. He averaged 41.8 last year. 55 on that one. Seven yard return. And we'll be right back to Seattle. Coach Washington was coming hard. They came very close to blocking this, but Tupa gets it off and gets a suit. I thought they were going to rough the kicker right there. They avoided him. And uh, Tupa, as you pointed out earlier, you would take him if you were coaching in the pros. He can do it all. He's a great one. Reminds me of Ray Guy, who came to the Raiders out of Mississippi State. In his earlier days, he too was a quarterback. I don't know if his leg has quite the whip that Ray's does. Penny on first down behind the right side. That huge offensive line. Let's get an update from Jim Nance and let's go to New York, Jim. Frank Tennessee has been struggling against Mississippi State. This is a conference game in the SEC, but here, William Howard with 12 minutes to go runs it in. He's over 150 yards. It gives Tennessee a little breathing room. Let's go back to Seattle. Johnny Majors and the Volunteers. Every one of those teams ranked in the top ten if they keep it up, won't they? Second down and eight. Chandler back. It's Franklin coming across, and he is short of the first down with Camaro, number 14, making what? the stop for the Bucks. Excuse me, Brett, but Washington has not had very good field position. They have started at the 14, the 6, and the 17, but they have managed to move the football. Dominated possession but they haven't been able to kick it in for any touchdowns. A Jager field goal, putting him 16 shy of the NCAA record for field goals. Well, they come with a full house again with two, three fullbacks in the game. And on third and one, I don't know, they power close to a first down, and it'll depend on where the officials spot the ball that time. It was Covington. He has carried a couple of times out of that full house look. And what we're going to see a little later on, I think, from that same formation is the outside option, which they haven't shown yet. The defensive secondary supported very quickly to the inside. They could be vulnerable later on. Chandler is a quarterback for Coach James, whom we probably don't know too much about. And I asked James to assess the young man for us. Well, Chris Chandler is a, is a player I think that a lot of people around the country are going to get to know about. I, uh, you know, I, I may hate the words and may have a bad game, but... Uh, He's a marvelous athlete, and he's, he's very bright, and uh, he's got a good, strong arm, and, and what little he has played in the past, he's played very well. Came out of Everett, Washington. He was recruited nationally. He was a superb basketball and baseball player in high school, as well as the team's quarterback. The measurement gave the Huskies a first down, 7.50 to go in the first half. Washington three, Ohio State nothing. It looks like he reverse pivoted and was trying to hand back, but his, I don't know whether his foot slipped out, but he could not get to the exchange point. Eric, do you change your game plan when it starts to rain? What adjustments does a coach make in a situation like this? You just better hope you've got a doggone good running game to establish because as the ball, as a game wears down here, the ball gets, all the balls get wet. It gets to be tougher to throw. How about Maybe. the artificial turf in the rain? Well, it can get slippery, but it is a blessing as long as it doesn't get too cold, as we well know. Second and 12. Chandler runs the draw with Finney. And the Buckeyes were ready. And number 36, is he in on every tackle, or is it just my imagination here this afternoon? Well, he, you know, as I pointed out, he made 16 tackles in that Alabama game, one interception. He's some kind of player. Jim will have all the late scores and highlights coming up on the Prudential College Football Scoreboard at halftime from New York. Third and ten. Franklin in 
in motion. That inside pitch, and Weathersby with a hole. Nicely executed play. Great call. Great call on a passing down. Watch from the end zone here. Chandler drops back, deals the ball off to Weathersby. He gets a great hole over the right side and comes up field. Finally brought down here, as you see, by White. Mike Zandowski, number 75, the right guard, came out on Michael Key and blew that hole apart. And then they sealed up Spielman with a stand-up block. And they come back with Weathersby to the right side, trying to establish something outside, but the defense not yielding much over there. Fred Ritter, number 90, in on that stop for Earl Bruce. You know, Brent, as I was saying earlier, when we came on uh, for the telecast, there is an advantage in being able to see your opponent and not have to anticipate what they're going to do defensively. They have set up, Washington has, an excellent game plan, as we have witnessed here, certainly in the first uh, quarter and a half. And Bruce has to be a little bit uneasy about his Buckeyes starting off a season 0-2. Not like Ohio State's football program, if that should be the case. Long way to go here. And Weathersby finding a hole on the left side short of the first down with John Sullivan, 57, and Derek Eisenman, 10, two of the linebackers, helping to bring him down. Well, next Saturday, Era, you and I will be watching the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against the Spartans of Michigan State. How will Lou Holtz do today against Michigan? Excuse me, Brent. I was looking at some other information here. I think I think he's going to do a good job. I think they're a solid football team. They're well disciplined, fundamentally sound, and they like Lou. Out of the full house, they did come up with a pass play for a first down. So on third and short, Don James shows full house, throws to the tight end, Rod Jones, for the first down. That's a superb play out of that formation. Jones caught 33 passes last year, more than any other tight end in Washington since, I believe, back in the late 70s. He's a great one, a great prospect. First down, 10 yards to go on the ball just outside the Ohio State 38. And upset, Virginia Tech downs Clemson 20 to 14. Upsets will roll in every Saturday, won't they, in this game? Hard to go unbeaten. Chandler downfield to Franklin. Franklin got the ball at the two-yard line. Great catch, Frank. Great. Watch Franklin come back with this ball. It's slightly under thrown. He turns and comes back inside on White, and a great catch. Here's another look at it. And he's got his hands underneath and makes the catch, and it's down to the two-yard line. Did he make that catch? The handoff to Finney, who bucks in. touchdown here this afternoon is scored by Finney. this you had to expect the fullback power 248 pounds close to 250 look at him pull his way in there he was injured last year but he's healthy this year and he scores the first touchdown I want to take a look at this play you be the official this time watch the ball in the ground he's got his hands underneath it and again, it's a judgment call on the part of the official, but nonetheless... I think it was a great oh, catch. Just, Looking what? at it again as we slow it down, I think Franklin made a terrific catch. That was my opinion. The 
story here. A young offensive line coming of age, blowing away the Buckeyes on defense. It's 10 to nothing, Washington. Earl Bruce swimming upstream here in the Northwest with the rain coming down and trailing Don James and Earl Bruce when he was the head coach down at Tampa took on James in the Tangerine Bowl. James was in the coach at Kent State. Bruce coming away with a victory in that bowl game. But James's success at Kent State led to him getting the job here a little over a decade ago. And this Washington team could be a real sleeper this year before it's over. Here comes Workman. Fumble. Washington. And there's a penalty flag down. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Let's see what they decide. There's a flag and a fumble. Oh, it's against the Buckeyes. There's Workman with the ball. He's got it tucked away pretty good with his right hand. Oh, he, he runs into his own man. Ewan Hake, 68, the guard, is bumped into Workman. Causes the fumble. The ball at the 22-yard line. First and 10. The Huskies leading the Buckeyes 10 to nothing. 3.38. First half. would think it's New Year's Day with a Pac-10 doing this to the Big Ten, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> They've done it a few times, haven't they? That was the option. Chandler kept it. Near the 15 with Sonny Gordon, number seven, bringing him down. Washington is dominating statistically. An 11-play scoring drive with Finney taking it in. This is second and five. Both wide receivers were to the left, and they came with Weathersby inside the 15. They had to get down near the 12 for the first down. Washington's using a double flanker wide to the field. They've used it most of the time. Ohio State is defending with three people, which leaves them short in the running game. They get down in here deep. I think you've got to try to defend with just two people on two because you're really at a disadvantage in the run. Let's see if they do it again. They have converted five of seven third downs here this afternoon against the Buckeyes. They run that second man behind Finney. Aaron Jenkins, the ball carrier. He picks up the first down, and they convert another one. It's the same full house backfield with three fullbacks, essentially, in the ball game. He fakes the ball to Finney, and, of course, the second back comes through, has a great opening, and they've had no problem with it. Apparently, Washington has surprised Ohio State with that formation and the plays that they're running from it. And the Husky staff realizes it. So they're continuing to use the formation. They doubled both wide receivers as they have been doing to the left. And they ran Finney down near the seven yard line. Ball is loose. We'll see if the whistle blew or the ball was down. He called it down. Ball was down. This field and Fred Ritter on the start. Watch Chris Spielman and see if indeed he was down here. Hard to tell. Let's say he was three quarters of the way down there. Hey, he was down. He was down. The ball came out after his <laughs> right hand. Great run by Weathersby.
his back. The Buckeyes turn it over on the kickoff, and the Huskies make them pay dearly. 17 to nothing with a minute 13 to go in the first half. You see, Watersby really turns it on here. He's hit hard at about two or three yard line, shakes loose and walks into the end zone. He's really a powerful back. Kevin Gogan, the right tackle, number 72, where I helped open up that hole. The one group dominating this game, Washington's offensive line. They have been superb. Let's go downstairs and see if Pat O'Brien is still dry. Got an umbrella, Brent, right here on the Buckeyes side. You know, they're talking literally when it rains, it pours, but the coaching staff is telling me that these, this group of kids is very tough mentally, and they know how to regroup. They're not giving up yet. Let's go back upstairs. They'll have to be, because they're under fire in Seattle right now. They fumbled the last kickoff. That'll be a penalty. That gives us an opportunity to remind you that tomorrow at 12.30, the NFL Today will start it off. We'll hear from Jim McMahon live, the injured Bear quarterback. Irv Cross will be in Soldier Field. Jimmy the Greek, Will McDonough, and Terry Bradshaw will join me. And then following that, it'll be the Eagles and the Bears. Buddy Ryan versus Mike Ditka. Don't forget Dallas and Detroit is another big one starting early tomorrow, too. Cowboys were impressive, weren't they, on Monday night? And then the doubleheader game will be the 49ers and the Rams. And, uh, Errol, what about Buddy Ryan? What's your impression of the way he started out, popping off about everybody and everything? <laughs> Not my kind of coach, I'll tell you that. I mean, I think you, you speak after you've been successful and very quietly even then. There's a running back from Temple by the name of Paul Palmer. And today, 13 carries, 149 yards, three touchdowns. So give him a big plus in that race for the Heisman Trophy. So after the penalty is marked off, that kick you into the hands of Holland. Out to the 27. And Harold, what about the Buckeye offense at this point with a minute six to go? Well, we haven't had many opportunities, but what I think I would do because of the field position, there's a minute and six seconds. Run it down, go back to the locker room, regroup. Don't make a mistake here that's going to cost you another three points or seven. You're already in enough trouble. There's 30 minutes yet to go. Safe conservative plays, and let's get into the locker room and talk about what we can do in the second half. And while they talk about it, North Carolina beating Kansas, and we'll have all the scores coming up from New York with Jim Nance. That's just ahead of us here on the Prudential College Football Report. Carter at midfield, smacked hard, stays on his feet. Boy, they went after him that time. Tim Peoples, oh. number 26, really gave him a lick. Sure, the ball was already down. Be a 19-yard gain when they mark it there. Let's take another look at this. Chris Carter, we knew we were going to hear from him. Carsadas gets the ball to him. It's only his third pass in 30 minutes of football. Now watch Peoples come in here, 26 right there. Make a great hit. Carter still got it, and they drive him back, but they moved upfield very nicely. They're in better field position now. And they've got 57 seconds, Sarah. Got plenty of time here. They're in good field position now, but Carsadas had not had an opportunity, having only thrown two balls up until the time that he just completed that one to Carter. They've got three wide receivers in this formation. Holland, Carter, and Harris. Taggart is out. Same scene. Carter dipped back a little bit inside the 35-yard line, and again, it was Peoples. Carter was set to go without a huddle. 14-yard gain, another first down. Chris Carter igniting the Buckeyes. Is there enough time? We'll be back. Ryan is returning to Chicago for a homecoming he'll never forget. It's the Eagles against the Bears. Doubleheader action begins tomorrow with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Field goal specialist Pat Amaro warming up on the Buckeye sideline there. I guess I could see a sequence with time running down that they might even try a field goal just to get on the board. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
both times on those passes, Carter has been wide open. They haven't doubled him. There's the draw. Fumble. Workman puts it on the rug. And Washington will take at least a 17-0 lead into the locker room with Reggie Rogers coming up to pound the ball carrier and force that fumble. The All-American defensive lineman for Don James Husky stops the Buckeyes cold in their tracks. They're trying to run a little sprint draw. Workman breaks out to the outside here, and the ball, Reggie Rogers, shakes it loose from him. And, of course, this kind of turnovers have killed Ohio State. Steve Roberts pounces on the loose ball. We'll be right back. Jim Carsaros rallying the Buckeyes there for a moment until they turned it over for the second time in this quarter. They fumbled a kickoff. That set up a touchdown. Workman fumbles here, and that stops a Buckeye drive. Earlier in the first quarter, the Huskies fumble once, ending a drive. Chandler going long. Hill, he's got it down the sideline, but he's out of bounds at the 10-yard line. The thrill is back. 46 yards and out of bounds at the 10, and the Huskies aren't through yet. Great throw here by Chandler, ground level. He's got a great arm. They say he can throw the ball 75 yards. Good tight spiral. There's Lonzo Hill. Lonzell, I should say, stepped on the line. The official picked it up. But that shouldn't happen with that kind of time on the clock. That is a great call by this coaching staff. A lot of staffs would have been very content to run out the clock and go in up 17-0. They are assured of three points with Jager. They hit Jones the tight end. He is muscled out at the six-yard line. Rogan did a pretty good job. He's only 187 pounds. The number 29 knocking in on, jo on uh, Rod Jones. He's 6'4", 240. Made a good hit there. But they killed the clock. And they've got many opportunities here. Three more. Don James with all his timeouts remaining. 28 seconds on the clock. And perhaps the best field goal kicker in college football. The lob to Hill. <laughs> Ohio State has to be embarrassed by what's happening here. <laughs> somersault he made it look like he planned falling down <laughs> his daddy was a good one J.D. Hill down at Arizona State later with Buffalo in the NFL put it down again 24 to nothing Washington over Ohio State Quiet man so far in this Husky attack. Step forward here. Lonzel Hill, who along with Chris Carter, ranks at the very top of the wide receiver list. This is what you call a fadeaway. The defender, number 29, Greg Rogan, does not come back and play the ball, and you see that Lonzel does. And another touchdown for Washington. And the play that set it up, Chandler the junior. Sticks Hill beautifully down the sideline. Gordon was off him, and he'd have gone in there, except that he stepped out of bounds on the 10. 24 to nothing, and we'll be back. Washington has showed us everything except the onside kick. <laughs> they will not rub it in, I would no. imagine here. And also, Brent, they have scored on both fumbles that they recovered from the Buckeyes. toward the end zone and Everett Ross who replaced Workman Workman fumbled once on a kickoff and another time from scrimmage might get a little loud in that Ohio State locker room at the half you, know? <laughs> you can say that again 
Well, here is the former offensive coordinator of Ohio State, Glenn Mason, the head coach at Kent State, trailing the former head coach at Notre Dame, Jerry Faust. 17-7 is the final of that game. That's a big win for Jerry because there was a lot of controversy between the two coaches going into that game. And, of course, Jerry has won what they call a Northeastern Ohio rivalry. Workman is out. The freshman, Jim Bryant, 41, goes into the backfield. And Carsados hits him right away. Out to the 32-yard line with the seconds ticking away here in Seattle. And Daryl Hall, backup strong safety, bringing him down right there. You know, Carsados can throw the ball 80 yards. And I would guess they're probably going to send Carter straight up the field and go for the home run. Now let's take a look at the Ohio State campus located back in Columbus, Ohio. They could use some of those great professors to explain exactly what's happening out here on the field. <laughs> I mean, the Huskies have jumped all over the Buckeyes here this afternoon. They've really looked outstanding. I mean, they've moved the ball on the ground. The defense has played very solidly. But, you know, you can't discount uh, a guy like Carsadas and some of the receivers that he has, but their defense is going to have to stop Washington and get the ball back for him. Let's see if he goes with the big one. Down the right side toward Holland. Had a hand on it. Malone tried for the interception. Stepped up in front of the ball as time runs out on the first half. And it's a half that the Buckeyes of Ohio State would dearly love to erase in the second half. The Huskies jump all over them. Jim Nance will have an update on that as Lou Holtz scores first against Bo Schembechler. We'll join Jim after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents the Prudential College Football Report. Sponsored by the Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than life. Jim Nance back in our New York studios. Halftime, Washington whipping up on number 10, Ohio State, 24 to nothing. You can be rest assured that in the second half, we'll see a lot of that combination of Carsados and Carter, as the Buckeyes must have something big happen out there in Seattle. All right, in case you missed it, we reported it earlier today. This morning, Florida State offensive tackle Pablo Lopez was shot and killed on campus in Tallahassee. Lopez, a junior, was 21 years old. Now, let's get you caught up now on the top 10 in this college football Saturday, where four of the top 10 teams are idle, including number one, Oklahoma. The Sooners will meet Minnesota next week, and we'll be hearing here at uh, halftime from Brian Bosworth, the All-America linebacker for the Sooners. Second right, Miami, with their final tune-up before taking on Oklahoma in two weeks, a game you'll see on CBS. Tonight in the Orange Bowl, the Canes will go against Texas Tech. Third-ranked Michigan trailing Notre Dame. Lou Holtz's team taking it in on their first drive for the 25th coach of the Irish. His first game there, Notre Dame leads at 7-0 first quarter. Fourth-ranked Alabama over Southern Mississippi at halftime. The Golden Eagles have played the Tide tough the last four years. In fact, they beat them back in 82, and they're right in there right now, trailing by four at halftime against Alabama. Number five, Penn State off this week. They'll meet Boston College next week. Number six, Nebraska Idol. But earlier in the week, they won a battle. In fact, it was on Tuesday. The NCAA overturned the suspension of 60 players for one game. Number seven, Texas A&M will take on LSU tonight in Baton Rouge. What a battle this will be. As the Aggies feel they have a national championship shot this year, we'll see them in action tonight against LSU. That should give us some indication of the Texas A&M team. Number eight, Tennessee is trailing with less than two minutes to go against Mississippi State. The Volunteers are driving, however. Here's the score that just put Mississippi State on top. The quarterback on the keeper, Don Smith, 62 yards in the final five minutes. He puts the Bulldogs in front. What an afternoon he's had. He's had three touchdown passes, Don Smith, and he's rushed for almost 100 yards. Still less than two minutes to go. Tennessee still has a shot inside the 15-yard line of Mississippi State. Uh, Ninth-ranked Auburn with their newfound aerial attack. They have the weekend off. Next week, the Tigers will go against East Carolina. Now, in the East, California traveling all the way from the West to meet the Boston College uh, team. And that final 21 to 15 as the Golden Eagles beat the Golden Bears. Here's the winning touchdown. Seven minutes to go. Jim Turner takes it across from one yard out. 
and Boston College evens up to their record now at 1-1. One and one. Also in the East, Army leading at halftime over Syracuse. They've won 12 in a row at home. Make that the third quarter now. The Cadets leading by 9. Navy and Virginia tied 10 apiece in the third quarter. And in the first game ever in the brand new Colonial League, Holy Cross leads Lehigh by a field goal in the third quarter. Still ahead here at halftime, we'll be talking live with college football's best linebacker and the game's most outrageous personality, Oklahoma's Brian Bosworth. And of course, we've got more scores and highlights as the Prudential College Football Report continues here on CBS with more results from the East and the South. Jim Nance back in New York. Out of the West, 11th ranked BYU. Looks like they've come up with another quarterback. His name is Steve Lindsley. He's thrown two touchdowns, and the Cougars lead New Mexico. That's a conference game out on the whack by 10 in the third quarter. Wyoming has made the switch from the wishbone to the passing attack with new coach Dennis Erickson. They lead 7-3 over Pacific second quarter. First quarter out at Oregon. Colorado and Oregon scoreless. In 1984, the last time these two teams met there, Ed Reinhardt of Colorado suffered a near-fatal injury. He'll be honored today at halftime. And by the way, his brother Tom, Tom Reinhardt, will be a starting tackle for Colorado in this game today. That's just started out on the West Coast. Now, in the South, a surprise, Clemson and Virginia Tech. Clemson always tough when they play at Death Valley. But uh, the Tigers have been beaten by Virginia Tech. 20 to 14 was the final there. Now, you see Augustana, the team with the longest winning streak in the country, Tied right now, a scoreless tie with Elmhurst. That is 0-0, uh, and that game is at halftime. Now, when we come back, all right, getting back to some of the scores, Kentucky and Rutgers. Kentucky now a field goal on top of Rutgers. That is in the fourth quarter. Rutgers coming off that win last week against Boston College. Tulane and TCU, two teams that last year had disappointing seasons. The Green Wave, however, in front, looking good here, 17 to nothing over TCU. Now, here's that upset, Virginia Tech, over Clemson, 20 to 14, and it's always tough to win at Death Valley. But Tech got it going early with a block punt. Here they blocked the punt of Bill Spires, and Victor Jones was on the back of the end zone, just in, recovered it for the touchdown. They made it seven to nothing, Tech. And then later on, the quarterback, Eric Chapman, watching with a little flip now to Steve Johnson in the end zone, five yard score, put Virginia Tech up by 10, and they go on to win it by six. Iowa, for the last three years, has gone over 50 points against Iowa State. It's now 43 to nothing. The Hawkeyes may reach that 50, uh, 50 mark in this game against the Cyclones. 43 to nothing was the final here. Now, Louisville and their coach, Howard Schnellenberger, trailing Indiana 7 to nothing. Louisville already 0-1 on the season. The Hoosiers trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. For Purdue, they are starting a freshman quarterback today. His name is Jeff George. He's already thrown two interceptions but he has gone for over 200 yards in the first half, and they lead three to nothing. Jeff George, freshman quarterback for Purdue, they lead it three to nothing at halftime against Ball State. Now, North Carolina and Kansas, the Tar Heels win it in a shutout, 20 to nothing. Tar Heels had to play without their outstanding sophomore running back, Derek Finner, who missed the team playing yesterday and uh, did not make it for the game. So Finner was absent, and Carolina won it in a shutout against Kansas. Now, in some of the other scores, Utah State against Missouri, that's in the second quarter, and Woody Widenhopper looking for his first home win at Missouri, and the Tigers lead Utah State 10 to 7, that is in the second quarter. Miami of Ohio against Cincinnati, this game is usually played on Thanksgiving Day, it's 31 all, and that is in the third quarter. Temple, what a big day it was for Paul Palmer. Three touchdowns, 175 yards, and Temple beats Western Michigan 49 to 17. And Akron and Jerry Faust, they had not won in 33 games at Kent State, but Faust put a feather in his cap today. He goes to 2-0 as Akron beats Kent State by 10, 17-7. And once again, August Stanton, the team with a 37-game winning streak, scoreless at halftime against Elmhurst. And when we come back, we'll talk live with Brian Bosworth, the All-America linebacker for number one Oklahoma. You're watching the Prudential College Football Report here on CBS, where the scores continue from around the country.
casualty in the top ten as number eight Tennessee has been beaten by Mississippi State. The Volunteers could not get it across in the final two minutes. And the Bulldogs go to 2-0 and with a win 27-23 on the road. So an impressive victory there for Mississippi State. The Chicago Bears had better beware. For this year, the big trendsetter in football comes from the college ranks. And his name is Brian Bosworth. The Boz is the most intimidating player in college football. Last year, as a sophomore, he won the Butkus Award as the best linebacker in the land. And this flamboyant All-America helped lead the Sooners to a national championship. And the legend of the Boz continues to flourish day by day. And I'd like to thank the folks from Sigma Epsilon Phi fraternity down there in Norman for helping us get these Ram Boz t-shirts, the hottest item right now in Norman. Now, just what kind of influence does the Boz have? Well, Last night, these Georgia high school students took a page for the Boz's guide to proper grooming, but despite the war paint, they, like their Boz hairdo, came up just a bit short. And with me right now, live from Norman, Oklahoma, is the original Brian Bosworth. Boz, welcome to the Prudential College Football Report. What do you think of all this attention you've been getting? Well, you know, I kind of take it into stride a lot of ways, but, uh, you know, I kind of... Uh, wish the guys down in Clayton, the uh, Rainbow Warriors, be better luck next week. You know, obviously all this publicity helps when you're in Heisman contention. But let's face it, a defensive player's never won this award before. What must Brian Bosworth do to win that trophy this year? Well, beating Miami would be a, a pretty good start, I would think. You know, uh, going head-to-head -head with Vinny uh, would uh, uh, certainly help matters along. But again, just winning the Big Eight and uh, being in contention for the national championship on January 1st, um, I think uh, has a lot to do with it also. Now about Miami, last year they came to Norman and they beat you guys 27 to 14. Defensively, what must you do to stop the Hurricanes? Well, I think last year we were a little bit unprepared for Miami. Uh, this year we've uh, put a new package in. I think we're more comfortable with this package. Uh, we've worked this week. This was our idle week. We've worked this week on, on pass rush. and. I think we're better and mental, more mentally prepared for uh, Miami's uh, passing attack this year. Well, of course, when you talk about the Miami passing attack, you're talking about Vinny Testaverde. If Testaverde were here right now, what would you like to pass along to the Miami quarterback? Well, I, I don't think Vinny's going to have a lot of time this year. I think Vinny's going to be uh, a little more rushed in his uh, pocket. I, uh, last year he had all day. It was like a picnic back there for him. He's just picking us apart. I think this year... Uh, we're a little more comfortable with what we're doing. I think that uh, uh, if we can put pressure on Vinny, I think Vinny will feel the pressure, and uh, hopefully he'll get a little more rattled. All right, Boz, enjoy the rest of your day off. I know you enjoy these football as Saturdays, huh? Yeah, this is, this is how I spend my day off. You know, it's like uh, people in America right now. It's like, is he for real, America? And it's, uh, go, go get the kids. The zoo's here. But uh, um, we're ready. We're ready for Minnesota this week, and I think Miami will be a good test for us. All right, Brian. Thanks a lot. We'll look forward to seeing you now in two weeks on CBS when Miami meets Oklahoma. It should be one against two right here on CBS Sports. All right, updating a couple of scores. Michigan and Notre Dame now tied 7-7 seven and seven in the first quarter. And we'll see you back here after the game, time permitting, with more of the Prudential College Football Report. The Prudential College Football Report has been sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. The Prudential, the rock, it's strong, it's on the move, it's bigger than light. Well, back here in Seattle at the half, and the Huskies are dominating the Buckeyes. Uh, coach, make that they're giving them a black eye. If one thing stood out in that first half for me, it was the fact that Washington was more physical as a football team offensively and defensively. They were really ready. You talk about an opening game. They certainly were. This is the last play of the half, and Peoples gives you an example as to what the Buckeyes have been facing out there. Chris Carter was ripped going out of bounds, and then again, the Buckeyes are beating themselves by turning the ball over. The bane of all head football coaches, I mean, the turnover can be so costly. On both of the turnovers that of Ohio State, they cost touchdowns. Now, this is the one where Workman runs into Eulenhake, his own guard, number 68. Watch here, and it deflects the ball out. Washington recovers the ball and takes it in for a score. And they turned it over a second time. And the story on the offensive side is the two quarterbacks. Carsados struggling a bit here in the first half. Has not pulled his game together. Is three of six for 41 yards. 
And on the other side, Chris Chandler. Remember Coach James saying, I think folks are going to remember his name after this game. Well, indeed, he has had a fine half, 9 of 12 in this touchdown pass. This is a fadeaway to Alonzo Hill right here. Watch him turn and come back. Rogan does not come back and play the ball. It's just like an alley-oop. You just jump in the end zone like a basketball game. All right, Coach, what do you do if you're Earl Bruce to get things turned around here a little bit? Well, they've got a really a tough situation, Brent. First of all, they've got to get tougher, as you pointed out. Secondly, the defense must play better if they expect to get the ball back for Carsadas and Carter to be able to score. We'll see what happens. I think they're not going to quit on this in this football game, but they've got to play better defense to get the ball back. And their work is cut out, trailing by 24 as we get ready to start the second half. We'll see how the Buckeyes respond. A character test, and we'll be right back after this word and a message from your local station. CBS Sports presents College Football, sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. And by AT&T, in long-distance services, information and network systems, telephones and computers, AT&T is the right choice. Coming out with a 24-point lead. They scored the last four times they had possession against the Buckeyes of Ohio State as we take a look at how they did it. Jager nailed that 42-yard field goal. It was 3-0 Washington with the lead. Then it became 10 after Finney muscled in from the two-yard line. The pass to Franklin set that touchdown up. Weathersby from six yards out. And after the extra point, it was 17 to nothing. And then Chandler hit Hill at the 10 and the touchdown pass of five. And suddenly it was 24 nothing. And coach Don James, who got off to a rocky start a year ago when he was upset here in Seattle by Oklahoma State, was determined not to have that happen two years in a row. Meanwhile, it'll be up to Coach Earl Bruce to see if he can rally the Buckeyes. <laughs> Earl, would you change anything defensively against Don James if you were Bruce and the Bucks? I think you have to take more risks to get the ball back for your offense. The big problem in the first half is they never had the ball. Washington just marched with it, either running or passing, and the Buckeye offense, well, most of the half was on the sideline. Possession time speaks of that. Nine minutes and 35 seconds is all Ohio State had the ball. Well, for more on the Bucks, let's go down to Pat O'Brien. Pat? Well, apparently it was some scene, Brent, in the locker room. A very serious scene, for what I'm told. Some of the coaching staff says they're beating us at the line of scrimmage. They've got to stop the turnovers, and they all say we're going to get tougher. That's the scene from down here. Let's now go back up. Yeah, tougher indeed. That was certainly what came through, and I'm sure you folks back in the Columbus, Ohio area who are big fans of the Buckeyes throughout the Midwest, for that matter, could feel that. The Huskies took it to them. Now Pat O'Morrow with the ball teed up at the 35, and we'll get ready for the second half. I have seen many times in football a team go in with a big lead, comes up a little flat to start the third quarter. Let's see if that's the case here this afternoon. Kickoff will be fielded by Steve Jones at the 2. 25. Out near the 30-yard line. Where Chandler will put it in play. Tomorrow at 12.30, it's the NFL Today. Welcome back, buddy. That's what Mike Ditka will be singing, right? Welcome back, buddy. I think they'll shake hands tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern time. And then it'll be the Eagles and the Bears. The Bears too tough, aren't they, Aaron? Oh, they're tough. I don't think they'll be shaking hands either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think the Buckeyes on defense are going to be shaking hands with the Huskies. Ball is at the 30-yard line. Let's see what James' staff wants to open up with here. Weathers be the tail. Good blocking on that right side, and three Buckeye defenders get him out of bounds. Get a three. Greg Rogan was one of them, and number 36 Spielman was not too far from that football. 
and the man in which rally the Ohio State offense quarterback Jim Carsados. Folks, that's the real Jimmy the Greek right there. <laughs> Second down and seven from the eye. Chandler rolls left and he hits Franklin. First down near midfield, 13 yard gain. Marvelous execution by Chandler. Also, the receivers as Franklin comes down and breaks to the outside. Hill turns inside, pulls the underneath coverage, and there he is wide open on the sideline. I like that call because they they floated Chandler to the left that time. They know the Buckeyes are going to come out with a lot of fire. They don't want to leave him as a sitting target back there. And they moved their pocket to the left that time, and he hit him on the move. Here's the first down call for the Huskies. Pullback. And Penny breaks a tackle and still going. To the 49 yard line. Let's see, they were seven and five, I believe it was a year ago. And what's that that Finney played in every game they won and didn't play in the ones they lost? Pretty close to right, uh, as the coaches were saying. Big fella at fullback. If nothing else, he's a good luck charm. Second down and six. Chandler keeps it. Takes a lick as he rolls out to the right. And John Sullivan, 57. He of the battling Sullivan brings him down. This is an important play, I think, for the Buckeyes. Third down, about two, I believe it is. They get the ball back for Carsadas, Carter, and company. They've got to shut Washington down here. And they have not been able to do so from this full house backfield, although they're not going to be in it this time. They're going to a double flanker. And the Buckeyes are not deployed in the short yardage defense. Moves the pocket. Defense breaks through. And they get him at the 49-yard line. They needed that. And it was you-know-who. Number 36. Chris Spielman. Chris Spielman. Era, how about the work back in the secondary that time on the receivers? They did a good job, as we see here from a wide angle. You'll see Chandler rolling out. Everyone is pretty well covered here. And Chandler does not want to throw it because they're covered. He finally slips and falls. Now they've got to kick the ball away. Now the Washington punter gets it up in the air from Thane Cleland. And the ball fielded by Everett Ross. And he is smacked down there. 34-yard punt. So again, the Buckeyes will have a long way to go for points. They have been in bad field position all game long. Can you come back trailing 24 to nothing? Seems to me I remember another coach who was up by 24 in Southern California. Oh, it pains me to even think about it. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Carsados on first down, off the fake, throws it complete. Chris Carter, number two. Bo Yates. Here we are. You see Carter come down, turns into the soft spot right here. Peoples almost gets up to him and make a good tackle on him, but not before Carsadas gets a completion. Well, Carter's reception leaves the Buckeyes five yards short of a first down. This could be a very encouraging series for the Buckeyes if they can get it going. Gives to Jim Bryant, the freshman. He's got room out to the 33, puts it on the carpet. Washington recovers. The third Ohio State turnover. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Do you remember how far and how deep into the season Ohio State went last year before they turned it over? Explosive here with this carry. Then he was hit. And he simply put it down. And I'll tell you, Mr. Peoples, number 26, he is some aggressive defensive back. And now the Huskies can strike again. They're at the 31-yard line. James Baxter split. Chandler on first down. Drops it to Weathersby. 
They were setting the screen. Chandler has completed his last nine passes, Eric. Well, the Buckeyes did a better job that time at defending that little screen pass. It came off of blocks better, than, certainly, than they did in the first half. So there's more energy on the part of the defense. Sullivan, 57, leads the way. A Let's go downstairs to Pat O'Brien, coach. All right, Brent, we're talking about getting tough. If you want to get tough and you're a Buckeye, on defense, you want Derek Eisenman. Derek Eisenman fought Mike Tyson in the Golden Gloves out of the bad guys, Tyson clobbered. Eisenman lost, but he's the only guy that Tyson couldn't knock out. It was a decision. On offense, you want Bob Maggs. His hobby is kickboxing. Two tough guys who will probably get a lot tougher this afternoon. Go back upstairs. All right, Pat. Here's Weathersby. There's a penalty marker down. Chris Spielman in on still another stop. Chris Spielman on the stop. Over on the sideline. Tim Peoples, number 26, out of San Jose, California. He attended Silver Creek High School, 6'1", 200 pounds. And there are, I am told, about eight pro prospects on the field. And one who is attracting some attention today is Peoples. And when he was 13 and 14 years old, he was the long jump national champion. Blocked two punts in 1984. He has great speed. Penalty being assessed against the Huskies. Use of hands penalty is marched off and leave Washington with a third and nine. Ball will be put down at the 30 and the Irish up ahead of Michigan 14-7 moments ago. Chandler, the receivers were covered. He puts it away and gets to the 17-yard line for a first down. Great 13-yard run. You can guess it. <laughs> he, he's really something. Hayden Fry runs it up big, Aaron. Well, I figured that I was a sleeper in the conference this year. We talked about it. They got Velocic, a quarterback. He's a good one. Second down and eight. How about Mississippi State coming back? They have now beaten Syracuse, Tennessee. So much for the volunteers in the top ten. Finney. Trying to get a hole on the right side. Rick Finney, the ball carrier, no game. Mr. Spielman, Spielman was the there. Tackle. Oh, boy. We've got to get an official count on the number of tackles he's made here already this afternoon. Maslin, Ohio, and you can trace the roots of Don James of Washington back to that city. That's where he grew up. He was a fine high school quarterback. Now he's the leader of the Huskies. Play by Camaro coming in defensively. That's Eric Camaro. That's one of the few times, Eric, that I can remember Washington winding up with negative yardage. Well, it, the, there's another ground view of it. You see Camaro number 14 comes right on the outside, defeats his blocker right now, 74 McLeod, and gets right in on Chandler. The first sack, I believe, on the part of the Buckeyes against the Huskies. Now here comes a 39-yard field goal attempt by Jager. 
if he hits it, he would break the school scoring record held by Chuck Nelson. He's got it. One more record for Mr. Jager. What a weapon it is to have a kicker with a leg like that. Mr. Donahue down in Los Angeles, I'd say, uh-oh, the Huskies are back. In case you were not with us, it rained hard in the first half. Then around the intermission, it stopped. The skies remain overcast here in Seattle, but if you're a Washington Husky fan, it is all liquid sunshine here this afternoon. 27 nothing. And your Seahawks taking dead aim at the Chiefs tomorrow in the kingdom. Here's a future NFL player. Kicking off to Everett Ross, number five of the Bucks. Oh, we found a weakness with him. <laughs> Two of them that he's kicked out of bounds. <laughs> All right, it's, it's awfully early in the season to get overboard on anybody. But I'm really impressed with this Husky football team. Well, they're well prepared. They've just done an outstanding job in getting ready for this. And of course, the Buckeyes, it seems as if the teams that come out from the Midwest to the West are, have difficulty. Well, CBS Sports is proud to announce our continued association with the Chevrolet College Football Scholarship Program. Here and I will select a Chevrolet MVP from each team as part of every 86 college football telecast. Chevrolet will then honor those selections by donating $1,000 in their names to each college's general scholarship fund to help advance the education of deserving students in their chosen fields. The Chevrolet Scholarship Program has become a very important tradition, and this marks the beginning of the 16th year. The Chevrolet MVP will announce it as soon as this game comes to a conclusion. Jager's next kickoff to Holland at the three. Short of the 25-yard line where Carsados will put it in play. 8-11 left here in the third quarter. Well, there I guess it'd be a wide-open package that the Buckeyes would want. But right now, there's a very special story on the other side of the field. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien, Pat. Thank you, Brent. Special indeed and tragic. You mentioned earlier that Reggie Rogers is wearing an armband, a black armband. It's number 20. That was the number of his brother, Don Rogers, the Cleveland Browns, who tragically died over the summer from an overdose of cocaine. It was a devastating week, the day before his wedding, the turn of events for the family down there in Sacramento as they mourned the death of Don Rogers. Yesterday, Reggie Rogers told me why he's going to dedicate the season to his brother. I'm uh, pretty much dedicating uh, this season to my brother. Uh, he was uh, a big factor in my life, and uh, I uh, just want to have a great year and uh, let everybody know how much I love him. And that is the last time he will talk about the tragedy. He is trying to put it behind him, and we wish him well with that. Let's go back to Brent. Thank you, Pat. It is indeed more than football, isn't it? A lot of times. Carsados on the play fake. Looking to get something going. Goes toward Carter, and it's incomplete. Brent, he had Workman wide open, right over the middle. And all he had to do was throw him the football if he wanted to first down. But he went for the home run. Not the home run, but a deeper pass. But they're going to have to kick it. Tupa. Back in to punt for the Buckeyes. And Riley will be the deep man. That's his average. He kept the Huskies in bay for as long as he could. Now Washington, unless he gets off a monster, will have at least decent field position. They back away from it and let it roll dead down inside the 30-yard line. Come back with 7-10 remaining in the third. The Huskies have jumped all over the Buckeyes. The 
great Irish hope, but Lou Holtz and Notre Dame must first contain the explosive Lorenzo White. The Fighting Irish take on Michigan State next Saturday on CBS Sports. We could have a big one next Saturday, Mr. Parsigan, if Lou Holtz makes that one stand up against Bo Schembechler because we'll be in East Lansing, Michigan State and Notre Dame. Well, Steve Berline had a great preseason in fall, and apparently he's taking it to the football field this afternoon. We'll see what happens the rest of the game, but it's a great start for Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish. Chandler enjoying a fine afternoon. He slipped on that exchange right there, handing it to Finney. Brigham Young apparently is having some difficulty, so let's go to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Jim? Well, Brent, the 11th-ranked Cougars have given up two touchdowns in the last 11 seconds. Here out of the wishbone, Billy Rucker on the keeper. He's run for two, passed for two, and New Mexico leads by 13. Nine minutes to go. BYU will be Washington's opponent next week. Let's go back to Seattle. Ooh, 30-17 New Mexico. Shocker. Well, that really is. Here is second and 13. Motion, inside handoff, fumble. Well, the difference in this game is that when the Buckeyes have put it on the carpet, the Huskies have jumped on the loose ball. There are Washington fumbles, but they recover it themselves. And that is going to go down statistically as an incomplete pass. And look here as Chandler comes back. He's trying to deal the ball forward. The ball's a little high, that little shovel pass. Hit Weathersby up around the shoulders. They're fortunate to get the ball back. Well, Chandler is 11 of 15 for 162 yards, and that one touchdown to Mo Hill, as he is known by his teammates. Over the middle, intercepted. At the 45-yard line, Greg Rogan. That's exactly what the Buckeyes needed to get that ball back in at least reasonable field position at the 45. Chandler looks like he just overthrows this. Drill, drills the ball right here. It's overthrown. It's almost intercepted in front, and Rogan gets it behind. Now the, very, excuse me, Brent. It was not a very good uh, decision on the part of Chandler because it was covered. An era of the Bucks with excellent field position. They come with the tailback. Workman battles his way to the 38. David Rill, linebacker, bringing him down. Jim Bryant, the freshman, replaces Workman at the tailback spot. Cooper, the fullback. Carter and Harris, the wide receivers. Here is Bryant. He squirted through the 35-yard line, and Steve Roberts tripped him up. The coaching staff uh, of the Buckeyes is really high on this Jim Bryant. In Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, just a freshman, 6'2", 12, and I guess he's got it all. Got to like his jersey number. <laughs> yeah. Wolverine settle for a field goal. Sato's under pressure, delivers it to Carter, who had fallen down and made the reception at the 22-yard line. Great concentration. Well, it really was. In addition to that, Carsadas did a good job of escaping what would have been a sack and throwing off balance. Watch here. As he's flushed out of the pocket, right on the inside by number 91, Habib. And there it is, Carter making a great catch right off the turf. Darrell Hall, number 40 is working at that strong safety spot. He has replaced James. They run the draw. Big hole on the right side. Boy, and the freshman got in there in a hurry. Boy, I like him. Did you see him thrust in there? He could accelerate. Era, when I was at practice the other day at Columbus, mm. I was more impressed with him than anybody else that I saw. Watch him accelerate through here and just thrust through. Bang! He really oh. has the body oh. development of about a junior or a senior. He doesn't look like a freshman. I like that. He's good one. Second down and two. Step left, pitch back. Cooper, good play. Down to the 10-yard line. That shovel pass to the inside. Erlinson brings him down, but the Buckeyes more and more starting to look like they can get something going here against the Huskies. 
That's been a very effective play, the little shovel pass and passing downs, particularly. The quarterback comes back and he draws the rush in and they seal off and wind up uh, dealing the ball forward, which is a forward pass, of course. And both teams have used it successfully. There's Bryant for the nine. That's real who brought him down. I tell you, Steve Roberts, number 94, did a great job. He's their anchor end. Came across, stripped all the interference, and forced the cutback, and the rest of the pursuit took care of it. Roberts did an excellent job there. Second and nine. Carter, touchdown, Ohio State. Tough to stay with man to man. Malone was trying to stay with Carter. It's awful tough. They were trying to blitz him. The protection was good. And of course, he hit him for the touch. Spirits have to be lifted considerably by that. Carter with five receptions for 60 yards and the Buckeye touchdown. And Amaro to attempt the extra point. There's a lot of time left in this football game. Pulled it to the left, but through. They can see what turnovers do, Brent. You'll see here they try to blitz Carsadas. They got man-to-man -man coverage underneath, and Malone is trying to cover Carter man-to-man. -man. Watch as he comes into the picture. You'll see him trailing rather than leading Carter. Right there, wide open. Very tough chore to cover Carter man-to-man -man across the field. Well, Malone was attempting to come across with him one-on-one. -on -one. He is perhaps the best cornerback on this Husky team. That's not good enough against Chris Carter. The Buckeyes have scored for the first time. It's 27-7. We'll be right back. 42 in the third. Washington leading Ohio State 27-7. Last time I can remember a Buckeye telling a CBS cameraman that we were coming back was a fellow by the name of Keith Byers. It was an Ohio State-Illinois game. And indeed, they did come back in that one. Buckeye fans will never forget that afternoon. He ran out of his shoes for a touchdown. So Amaro's kick, a little bit short, fielded by Steve Jones. There's an alley on the right. The safety man, number six, Holland, with that great speed, he was able to force Jones out of bounds. A 45-yard return, and that's a killer in a spot like this when you're trying to dig uphill, Aaron. Well, you can really see the seam open up from up in the booth here. Look at that hole. I mean, he breaks through there. There's no one even close. And he's finally run out of bounds after a 45-yard gain, but that thing really opened up. That's why you've got somebody like Holland on the kickoff team. If somebody can get loose, he has a chance to run you down. The ball's at the 47 for the Huskies. Split backs. They run Weathersby behind the right side of that mammoth offensive line. You'll see number 36 get up. There he is. <laughs> he made a great hit. He really made a hit on that play. He has 11 tackles, 9 assists, and I can remember one pass that he broke up all by himself and another that he assisted on. Bosworth may be better, but I'm not sure by how much. So let me tell you. Second down and eight. Weathersby slips. I had a chance to ask Chris Spielman the other day in Columbus what his goals are this season with the team. As far as my goals are, it's just to be the best football player I can be. And uh, I'm not trying to be uh, Marcus Merrick or Tom Kuzma. I'm trying to be Chris Billman. I want to be known as Chris Billman and not as a shadow of those players. They were great players, but I feel I'm my own person, a different type of player. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. I just want to play the game and have a good time. You know, Spielman comes from Maslin, Ohio. And I'll finish that thought right after this play. Chandler with good time, but now 
He can't get a receiver open. Drops it off to Finney on an escape pass. And his fullback down to the 45, far short of the first down. Don James comes from Maslin, not, and he knew Spielman's dad. They made a pitch for him to try to get him out here at Washington, but Spielman wanted to stay in the state. But there's a close association between the Spielmans and, of course, Don James, the coach here. And here's another look at Chandler being flushed out of the pocket. He escapes. It looks like he's going to get sacked right there. That's Cummerall, number 14, slips off, and he deals the ball off to Fenny. And, of course, he gets a couple of yards on the play. Cleland to punt again. He hurries it. Not a good punt, but it takes a Washington bounce. Inside the 10 yard line. The ball is bouncing right for the Huskies. Now we got an update. A lot of action developing around the country. So let's go back to Jim Nance. Jim, what do you got? Brent, fourth quarter, BYU down by 13, a fourth and nine from the Lobo 21. Steve Lindsley to Mark Bellini, and BYU's back in it. 5.51 to go in that game, Brent. That's enough time, Jim, for uh, BYU to score about six times. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> 122 left in the third. Garcados from the end zone. Under pressure, just did get it off. The safety coach very close. The official could have called it, but apparently his arm was moving forward. But they, there was no receiver in the immediate area. I don't know. It was a pretty close one. Who was that? Habib, who was in on top of him, number 91. Is that who came, Aaron? Yes. Let's see whether or not he gets it. There's no receiver in the area, but of course he's hit and he throws the ball. Would have thrown him off. It's a good call by the official. This is Workman, and Erlinson smacks him down. And here comes a third down play. The Buckeyes need to convert. So we are in Seattle, Washington, Husky Stadium, where the Huskies have dominated the Ohio State Buckeyes. They lead 27-7. It was 27-0, and the Buckeyes scored on a pass from Carsados to Carter. Here it is, third and eight for Ohio State. in there the second time that Habib has exerted pressure along with Steve Roberts Washington changed their scheme from a year ago defensively and they have four rushmen all the time now they've gone away from the three-man rush and Roberts and Habib and Alfred and Rogers really put pressure and I think that change has been very helpful to the Huskies Tupa standing in his own end zone
Tupa from the right side. Chris Carter was attempting to get him out of the way, and he actually pushed him into the punt. Then great hustle there by Zachary for the touchdown. Now watch him push him here from behind. That just accelerates him right on into the punt. Zachary's coming across the other way. Got to get it before it's a safety. And he beats Carter to the ball. Six more for the Huskies. And what an afternoon that young man has enjoyed. He really has. He's a great one. It's 33-7. They will be passing out the roses after this one in Seattle. The Huskies are back. Peoples came to Washington as a wide receiver. Moved him over to defense, and he demonstrated he's quite a hitter. Holland swinging right down at the 31-yard line, and a terrific tackle by Gaffney. Well, more action coming your way tomorrow, 1230 Eastern Time, the NFL Today. Welcome back, buddy. A live interview from Chicago with Jim McMahon, the injured Bear quarterback, and Terry Bradshaw will join us live in New York tomorrow. He'll have some insights on quarterbacks around the league. We'll find out what he thinks about Mike Tomczak, and then you'll see the Eagles and the Bears. Dallas and Detroit. It's going to be a very interesting game, and the doubleheader will match the Niners against the Rams. Here it's first half for Carsados. Over the middle, he completes the ball to about the 38-yard line to his tight end, Taggart. Carsados is 8 of 15 for about 80 yards. Navy beats Virginia today by 10. So George Welsh left Navy, and they turned around and put the number on him last year as well. huddling with Coach Bruce on the sideline. 15 minutes left. The Buckeyes trail the Huskies 30-37. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. If this holds, there will be some heat on that man right there. The Buckeyes will be 0-2 as Workman comes up the middle to the 45. It is rare for Ohio State to start off on the road. Their first game was not a pure road game. It was a neutral site for both Alabama and Ohio State. Now they have come out here, but for Coach Bruce ahead, he gets to go back to Columbus in the friendly confines where he will take on Colorado, Utah, and Illinois before going down to Indiana. If he could have won this or beaten Alabama, he could have been off to a great run. Instead, it looks like the Buckeyes are going to be digging uphill. It's first and ten. Posados incomplete. Malone and it's interference on Malone. Carter the receiver. Malone pleading his case. I like take another look at this and see where Malone interfered. Carsados at ground level here. Delivering the ball. It's on target. Let's see what Malone does. He's going for the football, which is a legitimate attempt on his part. He has every right to go to that ball. Let's see from another angle. He's going for the football. I think that I think that's a poor call on Malone. He made a bona fide effort to go for the ball. He can go through the receiver if you so desire. <laughs> First down, the ball will be at the Husky 40-yard line era. Not to say the official has made the call, but nevertheless, regardless of how we see it, it's first down for the Buckeyes. Malone's father, like Hills, also played for Arizona State. And around. Holland looking for daylight. Rogers is right there. Or were they waiting no. on? Reggie goes down quickly to grab his leg. Got a cramp, I think. Well, you talk about a well-coached team. The first time the Buckeyes tried to run a reverse, the whole world's over there waiting on it. They're well-prepared, well-coached. 
That play went for a 22 yard touchdown against Ray Perkins in Alabama in that first game. I think he just got a cramp in his leg. He'll be a force to be reckoned with whenever anybody plays Washington this year. Bob Willig at number 96 is his replacement. There's a chant that was made very popular in days gone by in Yankee Stadium. Now they got their own Reggie. Maybe they'll name a candy bar up here in the Northwest after. On second and 17, great catch right over the middle of Workman. Now Brigham Young is rallying. So let's go back. Jim Nance, how the Cougars doing right now? Well, Brett, New Mexico had a short punt, so BYU came right back firing. Lindsley to Richard Zayas, a backup receiver. Zayas picks up 47 yards, set up a one-yard dive for a touchdown by Lakehe Muli. BYU takes the lead. New Mexico has missed an extra point. There's less than three minutes to go in that one. Let's go back to Brenton Era. You call that one, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Typical air BYU. Here it's Carsados on the third down. Going deep down the middle. Incomplete. He overthrew Carter. Had him open by about a yard, too, Aaron. Yeah, he was he had the uh, lead on him, but Carsados just overthrew it. Watch Carter break to the outside. He's got man-to-man -man coverage. And of course, sheltering down deep. Number 25, Zachary runs right by Zachary. Zachary thought the ball was going to be thrown earlier. You're down 33-7, 13-24 to go, and here's the punter. Tom Tupa in the game. I don't know, maybe That's, they'll uh, let him throw the ball, but I don't think so. It's too long to go for the first down, fourth and 12. High punt back toward the end zone, and it's going to go in and come back out on the 20. 13 minutes to go, you might wonder. Perhaps you want to go for six, but instead Ohio State will turn it back to Washington. We'll be right back. Jim Carsados and the Ohio State Buckeyes are having a long day in Seattle, Washington. They trail it 33-7, 13-15 to go, and Chris Carter and Carsados will have to wait to get their hands on the ball because you would expect Don James and the Huskies now to come out with strictly a ball control conservative approach behind that big offensive line and give them some drive blocking experience. Strictly deep in their own territory. Weathersby getting over on the left side. Oh, Spielman again reaching out and tripping him up. Chris Spielman and John Sullivan on the stop. Two tight ends in the game for James. Jones and Scott Jones. Second down, five yards to go. Second and five, and Chandler brings the team to the line of scrimmage. Long counts, doing anything they can now to take seconds off that clock. Wintersby smacked that time. John Sullivan, number 57, stepped into that hole. Chris the Sullivan twins, Mike and John, 167, the other 57. I, I can never tell them apart when I see him yeah. down on the field. What a job uh, James has done here, too. Can you imagine? He's had five seasons that he has won 10 or more ball games. I mean, that tells you a little something. Did a job against Oklahoma. Oh, well, that orange bowl? Yeah, sure did. Coaching staff. Third down, they get the man open right now. They hit Jones, the tight end. Yes, sir, Mr. Spielman gets credit for another tackle. Well, nobody was over there. Jones was wide open. He stepped out of bounds on the Husky 36. Reminds me of some of the afternoons that Dick Butkus would spend with the Chicago Bears. <laughs> You'd be all over the field. You'd make one stop after another. You'd be terrific. And you'd look at the scoreboard, and you're losing by 20, 30 points. Well, there's Earl. I know how you feel, Earl. I've been there. Not too often on opening day you have it. No, not on opening day. First and 10. Drops it. Intercepted. Badly thrown ball at midfield. And that is David Brown, the safety. 
You know, that's one of the that's probably one of the few things that Chandler has done here that has that's been less than perfect. He's had quite a day. You know, Eric, he doesn't throw the ball real well over the middle. He throws yeah. better to the sidelines. Yes, he does. And and he seems to throw better when he's on the move, although here he's on the option. There he is Jones wide open. He just overthrows him. Look at that. Had him right there, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. He was wide open on the play. Buckeyes 51 yards away, 11.40 to go. He certainly couldn't fault Chandler for his accomplishments. Tom Tupa is the Ohio State quarterback. Hands off to Workman, who gets across midfield. In practice yesterday and watching Tupa, he has a, a whippy arm and great velocity when he throws. He kind of snaps the ball off, and I'm sure we're going to see him put it in the air here as the play comes in from the sidelines. You know, he's six foot five, 212. Well, there he is right there. Era, where's Brexville, Ohio? Brexville is just south of Cleveland, not very far. Second and eight. Drops it off, and Workman should have had it. That should have been an Ohio State first down. He has not had a good afternoon for the Buckeyes. It sure hasn't. Well, here's a young man who normally is a punter facing fire as a quarterback here this afternoon, and he hung tough in that pocket, didn't he? Stepped up in it, dropped the ball off. He had nice touch on it. And it was dropped. Typical of what's happened to the Buckeyes. Here. They really have. They've had an afternoon where nothing has worked for them. That is good. Third and eight with Carsados watching Tupa quarterback the team right now. Incomplete. He forced that ball a little bit into double coverage. The one man that's going to be hounded right now is Chris Carter. Broken up by Bolliers. Incomplete. Here you are with Carter, has his hand up, but watch him collapse right to the ball, right there playing Carter. He's got enough people around him to defend him. That was Bo Yates, the whip linebacker. Oh, yeah, the weak linebacker. And the Washington terminology dropping back, and Tupa just calls his own number for the punt and drops back. Snap, Tupa slipped when he came back down. Boy, I'll tell you, that oh, is that? another fine play. Oh, what a play that Get is. Get the punt off, take one step, buy yourself some daylight. <laughs> a 42-yard punt under duress, if you will. That was good reaction on his part. You know, it was a year ago. We were in Ann Arbor, Michigan, rather than Seattle, Washington. And it was the Wolverines of Michigan against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Irish led it 9-3, and I will never forget these two moments. This was the kickoff that started the second half. Now watch. Alonzo Jefferson fumbles the ball. Michigan recovers. Jefferson's out with a knee injury. Six plays later, most important touchdown of the season because the Wolverines never looked back. On the quarterback draw, Jimmy Harbaugh dives in for the score. And Michigan won it 2012. Now, of course, it's a year later. And Michigan trails the Fighting Irish. 14-10 at the half. Era, that's a pretty good showing by Notre Dame. Well, I've, I said that if Burline carries his performance in, pre or in the preseason activity out to the game, beware of Michigan. That's exactly what appears to be happening. Lou Holtz brought 16 years of experienced college experience to Notre Dame, and I think he's proving that he's a top guy. What's that quote I saw yours in the paper that in three years he's going to be the best coach of all time in the history of Notre Dame? No, 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 no. I, I don't know where that quote came. I said in three years I believe that Lou Holtz will take Notre Dame to a major bowl. That's exactly okay. what I said. Okay. Alabama coming on strong in the second half. Ray Perkins, Bama. They can present a good argument for being number one if they keep it going. BYU hung on. Jim Nance kept us updated with that video. And how about Army? Syracuse loses two in a row. See, both Army and Navy win today. Rebuilding teams there. Steve Jones is now the tailback. He has replaced Weathersby for the Huskies. 
He's a good-looking fullback, and yeah, he, uh, he really is. When he's healthy, he had a full hamstring last year, and of course they asked him to do a lot of stretching this year so they wouldn't have a reoccurrence. He's a big weightlifter. Jeff George's debut. Get the job done for the Boilermakers. He was the top-ranked high school quarterback last year. Came out of the Indianapolis area. Have you seen Jeff throw it all yet, Eric? Well, I've seen some of the films of him. Of course, he's starting as a freshman. I'm sure that he was pretty nervous, but he's got the arm, and they say he can do a lot of things with experience. He'll give Purdue quite a dimension there. 15 to go here in Seattle. And the Huskies run Jones. He's out of Sacramento, California. Don James recruits heavily down in California, doesn't he, Coach? Got a lot of youngsters out of that area. Also from this state, Washington, a lot of them right in the Seattle area. This is a good football state. As a matter of fact, I had some youngsters when I was at uh, Notre Dame from the Washington area. Era, when was the only time you lost the first game of a season as a coach. What was it, you're 25 gonna pay, years? You're going to pain me again, aren't you? In 1957 at your school, Northwestern. <laughs> and I managed to lose them all that year. <laughs> I remember that year, Coach. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Here comes Jones again. Daylight. What a run by Jones. Mike Sullivan wrestles him down finally. 17 yards on that run. Boy, they are really well prepared for this game. This is a, just a toss sweep off of the eye. Look at the blocking up front. Now watch him shake the tackle right there. Number 30 is key. He misses. And 67 comes over Sullivan and makes the play. Nine twenty on the clock. Brown brings him down. Long afternoon for Carter and Carsados. In fairness to the Ohio State offense, they really never had the ball in good striking position early on in this game. In the first half, they only had the ball nine minutes and 35 seconds, but that's attributable to a great defensive performance on the part of Washington. You can see the dominance statistically there, certainly of Washington over the Buckeyes. Second and seven. Set power, double tied eye, run Jones again. One of the Washington coaches telling us yesterday that he thinks that eventually this will become the finest offensive line in the history of the James era. It certainly has the making Washington. of it. You know, uh, Earl Bruce and the Buckeyes, of course, decided that they would bring their team out early, not only to the, uh, the kickoff classic in New York, but also the, this particular game because the youngsters had to leave their jobs about two and a half weeks earlier, and they lost that much uh, income as a result of it, so they tried to make it a holiday or bowl atmosphere, but they're certainly not going to remember this for a bowl atmosphere, the way, the way this score is going for them. through that time and again they break that first tackle they get to the 35 as Aaron Jenkins rips one 13 yards behind that offensive line let's go down to Pat O'Brien all right Brent you talk about that offensive line listen to this step the offensive line for the Huskies six four and a half 286 pounds the Seattle Seahawks six four and a half 278 pounds tackle to tackle those guys are big let's go back to Brent and good. Yes, and young and getting better. They rushed for 196 yards. They're going to get 200 yards on the ground here this afternoon in that game. Seven thirty left here in Seattle. Thirty three seven. Washington struck for the first 27 points in this game for a touchdown pass to Carter. Got them on the board, and then Huskies came back with another one. Boxed up the snap on the extra point, so it's 33-7.
told that Lonzel Hill, number one, is the big play guy for this Husky team, and that turned out to be the case, too. When he caught a ball for 46 yards, it set up a five-yard touchdown pass. Well, I was watching him on Thursday, and Thursday's practice. They don't work out on Friday. And I was amazed how quick he is and how he seems to find the open seam all the time. They came out. I'm talking about Washington. They threw to Franklin early to divert their attention. And then they came back for the big play to Lonzo, Lonzel later on. Handler's straight back over the middle. Complete. And there he is. There's your guy, coach. Lonzel Hill for a sec. <laughs> you just talking about that, fellow? our guy. I knew he'd been too quiet for too long. Well, that was a great throw, too. I believe is Jager nails down another one. I believe, Mr. Parsegan, that when I vote in the AP football poll this week, that I'll put these Huskies in the top ten. I think you will. I think I'm sure you will. Watch here as Spielman jumps up to try to deflect this ball, but Chandler puts it right there. There's Spielman jumping, almost gets it, falls right on top target. Lonzel just walks into the end zone. He is dangerous. Chris Spielman looking in, knowing that Chandler's going to drop it off. Can't quite get to it. An afternoon of frustration for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The first of this century. And I doubt that Mr. Spielman has been on the losing end of too many whippings like this from Pop Warner. Right on into his career at Ohio State. Buckeyes get possession here with six minutes left in the game. Everett Ross being run back in the direction of the goal. Do you think they're not ready or we're not ready for this game? <laughs> Return to 15 yards to the Ohio State. And tomorrow there will be some other Warriors ready. Not among them, Jim McMahon. We'll talk live to him, 12.30 Eastern Time. 9.30 out here on the West Coast. Irv Cross will be live in Chicago. The Greek, Will McDonough, and Terry Bradshaw will be along live to talk football. And then, of course, it'll be the Eagles and the Bears. That's the first game of our doubleheader. That Dallas-Detroit is another good first one, too, isn't it? We'll keep you updated on all those games tomorrow. So they run the tail. Jim Bryant, the freshman. And we can run down some of our final scores here with Purdue. And a three. Behind Jeff George. Gets off on a right track for them. Over Ball State 20 to 3. Second down. Seven yards to go. Second and seven. And Tom Tupa. The backup quarterback. Continues to direct the Buckeyes. Number 85. This has also been a day of some upsets. Let's go to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Brent. Among the upsets, eighth-ranked Tennessee knocked off in Knoxville by Mississippi State. Rocky Felker, 33-year-old coach for the Bulldogs, gets the win there. Virginia Tech over Clemson in the Tigers' backyard. And Augustana, with a 37-game win streak, saw it come to an end today. They did end up with a scoreless tie against Elmhurst. Let's go back out to Seattle. Brent and Aaron. Jim, thank you, and I'm sure we'll have all the scores running down at the conclusion of this game. Incomplete pass intended for Taggart. And Aaron, Huskies haven't slowed up a bit. And this is the backup defensive unit. Bruce Beal, 48, who went out after that one. Well, you can't say enough uh, about the coaching staff 
of Washington. Jim Lambright is the defensive coordinator. He's been in that position for nine years and has been here for a total of 18 years. And defensively, they've done a great, great job. Do you know how badly the states worked them over last year? I mean, the Oklahoma states, the Oregon states, the Arizona states. I mean, they put a licking on them. You just show up. Be Washington State. State, too. Yeah. You were going to beat the Huskies. This year, they said, let's get a state to start the season. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Better get ready. Super punt is low. Fielded at 37 by Riley. Losing his balance, and he finally goes down at the 48 yard line at 429. Washington 40, Ohio State 7. We'll be right back to Seattle. Pat O'Brien, what's going on downstairs? All right, Brent, maybe one of the most confident people in all the stadium here, this man right here, Chris Chandler, who had a great day today. He's got a couple of bruised knees, nothing to worry about, he said. He's going to sit out the rest of this game. And Brent, he's down here saying, hey, that interception, I shouldn't have thrown the interception. He's complaining about that one. He had a great day and a great game. Let's go back upstairs. He did have a great day, Pat. And there's the freshman, Kerry Conklin, out of Yakima Eisenhower High School. Replaces him. Chandler wound up 14 of 20, 204 yards and two touchdowns. And meanwhile, in South Bend, Michigan goes up on the Irish 17-14 third quarter. Jamie Morris, younger brother of Joe Morris of the New York Giants, scores the touchdown that puts Bo Schembechler ahead. Second and eight. But Lou Holtz has the fighting Irish back in business, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. I mean, if we're hanging in there that way, 17-14 third quarter. Back up tailback Steve Jones was the ball carrier this time Scott Leach, Scott Leach bringing him down both coaches now utilizing their bench the worst thing about coming all the way out here to Seattle for a football game <laughs> and get licked is the ride home I mean you know if it was 45 minutes in a bus and you'd be in Columbus and you could go about your business and meet your girlfriend or your mom and dad that'd be one thing but getting locked up with the memories of this thrashing it's awful I mean the food's terrible on the airplane just get me out of here you say it's gonna be real quiet oh real yeah oh the coaches get that play by play and they're thumbing through it and you as a player you know they're looking right at the time you fumbled or you missed a tackle they're all looking at each other nobody's saying anything you got scowls on their face I hate those trips from the West Coast when you lose well they walked into a real buzzsaw out here a well-prepared Washington team a talented team has found a quarterback they have got a lot of depth at uh, skilled positions and will be reckoned with in the college football season. Back in well, the bad news is for the first time this century, if you're an Ohio State player, you're going to be 0 and 2. <laughs> but some of those fellas don't remember the early years. But <laughs> good news is you get to go back to the friendly confines of, of Columbus. Workman, who had come in to field that punt, got it at the 15. Got it to about the 22 yard line. Two minutes and 19 seconds to go. Seven yard return on that play. There's Workman. He's had a tough afternoon. Yeah, he really has. Of course, Woolridge was out of this ball game and uh, he had to step in. Unfortunately, the, the one fumble that he had on the kickoff was just one of those freak things that'll happen. I'd like to see Tupa get the air one out here. Yeah, I'd like to see him throw the ball a little bit. I think he's got uh, a lot of potential. That may be later in the season. Rides with the pullback. George Cooper, the ball carrier. Cooper hasn't been used much this afternoon. Well, you know, fumbles have plagued Ohio State all along when you think about it. If he doesn't fumble that ball inside the 10-yard line against Alabama, there's a whole lot of folks think, including probably some from Alabama, that uh, Ohio State would have won that night. And that was a key turnover. And as you pointed out earlier, this was in Harbaugh just hit oh. Morris again. 27 yard pass this time and Wolverines get a little daylight. Now. Well, now here's the freshman Bryant. Close to a first down Bruce Beal Jr. Linebacker. Yeah, there'll be better days 
There better be. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Bob Maggs who's shaking up? Indeed it is. Oh boy. Well, that's one thing you don't want when it's 47 if you're on either side of the ball. Mm. Number 71, Bob Maggs of Ohio State being assisted from the field. Well, there's Lonzel Hill, son of J.D. Hill, and he talked about the influence of his father. Oh, well, he always gives me advice. It's, uh, you know, mainly a little tips about, uh, you know, how to get open and, uh, you know, I know when I was coming up, he was always telling me to use my hands because he wanted my hands to be, uh, you know, as good as they can be. So I think, you know, some little tips like that are, you know, things that he said. Two touchdown catches by Lonzel Hill. And those of you in the Pac-10 who are saying, boy, we'll be glad when he gets out of here. He's a senior. I got news for you. There's a freshman <laughs> receiver by the name of J.D. Hill Jr. He's supposed to be as good as Mo. We love you too. Well, Jeff George of Purdue, what kind of an afternoon did he have? 23 of 40 for 225 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Oh, that's the only. So, Jeff George, the coaches will be talking to him all week about those three interceptions. That's what they, they, the coaches, you guys are all alike. They won't say nice <laughs> game and we want. He's how about those three interceptions? Well, a freshman start. I, I, I'll tell you, the guy does, George is an outstanding prospect, and uh, three interceptions is something that he's not going to be very happy with, but he did throw for 225 yards. <clears throat> hey, what happened to our close games? Well, we got to have one like this once in a while, I guess. Make us humble. Humble. That's right. Just like Ohio State today. Great performance by the Washington Huskies. They have stamped themselves as one of the better teams in the country with this win. And they've got a tough schedule ahead, too. They'll play Southern Cal next week. First Brigham Young era and then Southern Cal. BYU oh, sorry, comes right. next week. Then they go down yeah. to L.A. Tupas pass incomplete out of bounds. But listen to this. They go Brigham Young. Southern Cal, then California and Stanford, Bowling Green, Oregon, Arizona State, Oregon State, UCLA, Washington. It's not as tough as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> if you were the coach, you'd think that was tough. <laughs> Don't tell me, coach. Yeah. It's easy for you up here. Say <laughs> one, two. He ought to win yeah. ten again. Nothing to it. Take it out of the Orange Bowl. Take on, take on Barry Switzer again. Have a good time. <laughs> hey, we're going to see Barry in a couple of weeks down there with Jimmy Johnson, Miami, oh. Oklahoma. Huh? Well, that's going to be a great oh, football game. Oh yes. I think yes, Mr. Sir. Bosworth is not looking forward to Mr. Testaverde. The bone against Testaverde and the throwing. That's going to be something. Third down and ten. Hand it off to that freshman. And Bryant runs it out to about the 47-yard line. I really think he's going to become the tailback for I this do. football team before the season's over. Huh? I do, too. He's got a lot of potential. He's, yeah, he's just a youngster and needs some experience. That says it all. Not only do the players feel that way, but the coaches also. Someone's going to be happy. Someone's going to be sad. You know, one of the worst things that happens when you start to lose, you start to second guess everything that goes on by the coaches and the players. You can win a game and make a lot of mistakes, and that's all forgotten. But you just lose one like this, and, and you'll rip yourself apart during the week. If you'd have done this, or we should have done that, you know, everybody's got to an alibi for something when you lose. It's so tough. So true. That's why when you even take a win, you really want to take every error that you've made because they could be very, very important in a game that is very closely contested. A game where you're leading by a sizable margin, they're not so important. In reality, they are. 14 seconds remaining. So the good times are back in Seattle. And our friend Chuck Knox will be trying to win two in a row over the Chiefs who've come in here. Coach Makovic coming on in. They love football in the city. I can't think of another metropolitan area where they love the college football as well as the pro team like they do here in Seattle. We'll be right back.
Tampa and the Buckeyes. And now the Huskies are storming through the gates. Don James consoling Jimmy Carsados. The Huskies with a big one. 40 to 7. What an impressive performance they turn in here today. So we'll come back and have a wrap up. But right now, let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Jim. All right, Brent, 40 to 7, the final. You know, Ohio State for the last six years, Earl Bruce has gone 9 and 3. 9 and 3 is looking pretty good right now for the Buckeyes as they drop to 0 and 2. A lot of upsets on this Saturday. We'll get to the scores and highlights when we return after this word from your local stations. The score is shocking 40 to 7. Washington over Ohio State. The Buckeyes were the slightest of favorites. Now the Chevrolet most valuable players of this game here this afternoon. Quarterback Chris Chandler of Washington and linebacker Chris Spielman of Ohio State. Let me give you the numbers on those two fine young men. Chandler was 14 of 20 for 204 yards and two touchdowns. For Spielman, he did his bit. 10 tackles, 11 assists, got a hand on a couple of passes. So a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund. A scoring summary, it started out 3-0. Jager hit a 42-yard field goal, and Washington continued on a roll. They scored four straight times. It was 10-0, Fenny busting across from the two-yard line. Then it was his running mate, Weathersby, from six yards out. The extra point made it 17-0. And before the half, it was 24-0 as Chandler went five yards to Hill. Jager hit a field goal that made it 27-0 before the Buckeyes finally responded. Their lone touchdown, Carsados to Chris Carter. It was 27-7. But then Washington came back to block a punt in the end zone. Peoples blocked it, and Zachary recovered it. And it was 33-7, and Chandler went to Hill, 31 yards, and it was 40-7. So we'll be back in Seattle. We'll have a few final thoughts from Era Parsegan in just a moment. Well, Era, what are some of your final thoughts here? Well, I was very much impressed with the balance of Washington. They rushed for 204 yards and passed for 204. But in addition to that, we talked at the top of the show that would be Chandler, the man to watch. He delivered, and of course, the future looks very bright for the rest of the season for the Washington Huskies. And you have to be very disappointed in what the Buckeyes have done. 0-2 for the first time this century. They are blown away 40-7. to Some other developments around college football, and to get us up to date on all the scores, let's send you back to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Jimmy? All right, thank you very much, Brent. Again, that final was 40-7 to for the Buckeyes, their worst loss since 1967. Running down now some of the scores today. An interesting Saturday it has been, aside from the game we had, 40-7 to for the Huskies. Also, Michigan at Notre Dame. The third-ranked Wolverines now leading by 10 in the third quarter. This, of course, the debut for Lou Holtz as the 25th coach of the Irish. Fourth-ranked Alabama, a winner for the third time already this year. 31-17 over Southern Mississippi. Mike Shua, two touchdown passes, 199 yards. Crimson Tide now 3-0 on the year. The biggest surprise, well, eighth-ranked Tennessee getting knocked off at home in Knoxville as Mississippi State is now 2-0 in the year. The Bulldogs have the youngest major college coach in America, Rocky Felker. He's age 33. What a job he's doing. Here's his quarterback, Don Smith, going long for the touchdown to Fred Hadley, 44-yarder. Big day it was for volunteer running back William Howard. Takes the pitch out, goes seven yards for the score. Howard had two other touchdowns as well. He was doing it all. So a, a tip of the hat, if you will, to uh, William Howard, who proved he could even play without a helmet. But he was not one man doing it all for the volunteers. That was not enough. 
because this was the winning touchdown. Under five minutes to go, Don Smith, the quarterback, on the keeper. He goes 62 yards. What a day Smith had. He passed for 231 yards, and he ran for another 102, as Mississippi State is now 2-0 with a win at Syracuse and a win today at Tennessee. Yes, indeed, that is a conference game, so that hurts the defending champion Tennessee ball club. BYU had a real scare today from New Mexico. Cougars beat New Mexico 31 to 30. Lobos had taken a 30-17 lead. As you can see, the extra point hit the goalpost. Nine minutes to go in that contest. But you know that uh, offense for the Cougars, they like to air it out. And here's their new star quarterback, Steve Lindsley, going to Mark Bellini. That was a fourth down play. Cut it to 30 to 24 with five minutes to go. Then Lindsley, after a 47-yard completion, hands off to Hay Mooley for the winning touchdown. 31-30, BYU dodges the bullet. Lindsley had 361 yards passing and three touchdowns. Next week, BYU will take on that red-hot Washington team we saw today. That contest will take place in Seattle. All right, some of the other scores. Georgia and Duke meeting for the first time ever, and the Bulldogs, after leading only 3 to nothing at halftime, went on to win it by 24, 31-7. The Golden Bears against the Golden Eagles. As uh, West met East in this contest, and Boston College won it 21-15. to Syracuse and Army. Army was supposed to be down this year. They returned only seven starters coming off of back-to-back bowl-winning seasons. But today, Army at home. Watch this beautiful little razzle-dazzle play. The reverse to Benny White, who takes it around the left end, 22 yards for the score. That put the cadets up by nine. They go on to win it by five. 33-28, and they run that home winning streak to 13 in a row. They haven't lost at home in three years, so Jim Young doing a good job once again with Army. Syracuse drops to 0-2. Virginia and Navy, Napoleon McCallum no longer in the Navy backfield. His replacement, though, get this, Chuck Smith, 40 carries, 230 yards in his first start uh, since McCallum has departed. 20-10, to 10, Navy beats Virginia in a mild surprise. And a big surprise down at Death Valley, Virginia Tech over Clemson. That final was 20-14. to 14. Clemson had not lost a game to a team from the state of Virginia since 1954. 34 games in a row. But it started out with this uh, play early. A block punt recovered by Mitch Doe. That put uh, the Hokies up 7 to nothing, And then they came back with a little flip from their quarterback, Eric Chapman. Third down play, he finds Steve Johnson open. Put the Hokies up by 10 to go on to win it by 6, 20 to 14. Virginia Tech over Clemson. The Tigers dropped their opener. That's a real surprise. And an update, Michigan now leading over Notre Dame 24 to 20. And that is in the third quarter in South Bend. And we'll return with more of the Prudential College Football Report in just a moment. All right, what a showing today by the Washington Huskies out there in the Pac-10 as they thoroughly demolish Ohio State 40-7. to Let's go back out to Husky Stadium. Brent Musburger and Eric Parsegan. Brent? Thank you, Jim. A lot of developments around college football this afternoon and certainly more to come. We had a rout here today. The Huskies 40, the Buckeyes 7. Arrow looking ahead toward next week, Notre Dame and Michigan State. Let's assume, and I hate to do this, but let's assume that Michigan holds on and beats the Irish. Now they go on the road to take on the Spartans and Lorenzo White. How will they respond in that situation? Well, I'm sure they're going to respond uh, well. The problem is for Lou Holtz is to evaluate the personnel. He, he mentioned himself, he said, you know, this is like a jigsaw puzzle. I don't have all the pieces fit together, but as the season progresses, I think we'll be able to do so. Uh, I think they're playing the, uh, uh, the uh, they're playing the Wolverines very tough, and I think that uh, Lou is going to do a good job there. But it is always tough to go into East Lansing. I took teams there, and it's very very tough. Now, one of the things that you have to be impressed about is how well the coaches of Washington picked up things early on. You could see that you could get pressure on Tupa, and late in the game, assisted by a push by Carter. It was Peoples who did indeed block the punt and Zachary alertly pouncing on it before the ball went through the end line. Well, it's an embarrassment to any coaching staff and team to have a punt block. This is the way we, I was taught, and this is the way, and I don't think I had very many during my coaching career. And I'm sure that uh, they're going to have to go back and regroup. I'm talking about the Buckeyes. And uh, I, I think that Ohio State still has great potential, although Washington is a remarkable potential ahead. Errol, we want to thank the crew today. Our fine director, Joe Assetti, and college football report out of New York was, of course, Ed Gorn and Duke Struck in charge of that. And our associate producers and directors who are along with us out here in Seattle. 
And of course, all the fine folks who brought you everything from an interview with Bosworth down Oklahoma way to the game here. And also Mike Lou, the athletic director here at Washington and Rick Bay, the athletic director back at Ohio State in Columbus. Rick Bay showed up for the game, went out and did a little jogging yesterday. He was a college wrestler up at Michigan. And of course, thanks to everybody who helped us along the way here this afternoon. Ohio State in Washington and the Huskies defeated the Buckeyes 40 to 7. And now let's send you back to Jim Nance. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Brent. We'll have more scores coming your way when the College Football Report continues in just a moment. Buckeyes in just every phase of the game on their way to a 40 to 7 win. They got a lot of breaks, but boy, they played great. Look here. Vince Weatherby rips off 10 yards on the way to a first down right there and this touchdown. Same drive. Chris Chandler will hit Daryl Franklin. Franklin's got it on the two-yard line. Nice pickup, and here's the touchdown. Rick Fenny does it. Two-yard run. The Huskies lead 10-0. The Buckeyes get the ball back, but watch it. Woo! Welcome to Seattle in a little bit of rain, Buckeyes. The Huskies capitalize right back. Adam Weathersby, another great effort. Look at him break the tackle into the end zone. Washington leads 17-0. Chris Chandler brings him up again. And watch here. It goes back. The little lob pass. Lonzel Hill's got it in the end zone. Five yards, and it's 24-0 Huskies. Another fumble, and Jeff Jager comes in, and he breaks the school record for scoring. Chuck Nelson held that. The Huskies lead 27-0. Now, it really gets ugly from here. Ohio State is kicking. Tim Peoples comes out of nowhere, blocks the punt. Tony Zachary's on the ball, and Washington leads 33-7. The crowd is crazed at Husky Stadium. Here's the final score of the game. Chandler goes back 31-yard strike to Lonzel Hill, who's just got all the speed in the world. The Huskies win it 40-7 after the game. These comments. I never dreamed that would ever happen to Ohio State any time. You know, if they played the Bears, you wouldn't expect that to happen. So, uh, you know, like I say, we just got so many breaks, uh, and we were just able to capitalize with the, with the turnovers that we got in the field position, the kickoff fumble, uh, uh, and we stuck things on the board, and that, that really put more pressure on them. I feel like uh, like our team really came out and they were really prepared to play. I think uh, we had a great week of practice and it showed. I think the reason that our defense w did so well today is because our offense was on the field almost all day. I mean, we got lots of rest and, and um, we didn't really have that many plays when you get down to it. I don't know how we probably had about a total of 30 plays probably. The offense was just great today. I didn't think we was going to win by this much, but uh, we did. and. Uh, it feels good, you know, to practice three weeks or two two days, you know, two weeks of two days, and then a week of this, and to come out and play this well. It makes me wonder how good can we really be. I never would imagine that our second team would be in against Ohio State today. You know, I thought it was going to go right down the wire, and because uh, they have a, uh, anytime they get behind, they usually make things happen on their defense or offense. So I thought if we did get a lead, uh, they'd come back and, and we'd have to, you know, play them right down to the end. But uh, like I said, the momentum swung our way, and, and everything went right for us today. Well, everything did, Chris. Uh, no question about that, but uh, it didn't for the Cougars. Look at this score. San Jose State 20 and the Cougars 13 in Pac-10 action. USC, they beat Illinois, double the score. Stanford beats Texas 31-20. Boston College on top, California 21-15. Oregon down Colorado 32-30. And Fresno State shut out Oregon State 27-0. On to the college top 20. And look at this. Here's three 20s and a 1. Miami of Florida, 61, Texas Tech, 11. Michigan holds on and beats Notre Dame by a point. Alabama, they got a great team this year, 31 to 17, they beat SMU. Mississippi State, a four-point winner over Tennessee. That's the big upset of the day in the top 20. BYU, the next Husky opponent, won over New Mexico. There's the Washington, Ohio State score, just in case you don't believe it. Arkansas shuts out Mississippi. Arizona downs Colorado State 37-10. LSU on top of Texas A&M. That's a mile upset there. And Maryland beat Vanderbilt 35-21. Another Pac-10 score. Look who beat Michigan State. Arizona State 20 and Michigan State 17. Another up.